Dana Beers just casually dropped that twice he's butt chugged. <laughs> and he was like, it's college, dude. <laughs> you butt chugged? You butt Get chugged? the fuck <laughs> out of here. Are you ready? It's another edition of KFC Radio on the Barstool Sports Network. It's Clancy and Feidelberg. Feidelberg back from the dead. What up? Back in studio with a normal size I'm, neck. I'm in a good mood. Whoa. Don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm just Well, that's what happens it. when you have a near-death experience. I'm in a good mood. It wasn't a near-death experience. You know what? Take a dollar out of the jar. <laughs> take a dollar back. Every time you say something positive about enjoying life, you take a dollar back. Damn. Look at this. Crisp one, too. But also... I owe, I owe like a 20. Fuck the summer. I hate the summer. I'm going to kill myself. Put a dollar back in. Now, but Feidelberg is back. I'm going to tell you about why summer sucks in a second. But uh, back with zero, um, zero, we have no more knowledge about your body and, and what happened to you than we did like six days ago. None whatsoever. Like no. the, the, it, you are, of course, by the way. Like, you are this, like, medical marvel where the doctor's <laughs> like, we don't know. Like, I bet you, I, gar I guarantee you that there was some conversations that maybe you were not privy to where they were calling in the interns and they were calling in double, uh, uh, second and third opinions being like, we, you, this, we, like, children, watch this. We've never seen this before. We don't know what's wrong with this guy. Bro, there, like, Wednesday and Thursday, there were some scary moments because of exactly that. You, the where, text uh, message is like, I'm fine. And then, like, six hours later, they're like, they're still, like, they're, they're, they're transferring me to another hospital. They're bringing in other doctors. They don't know what's wrong i'm getting a biopsy but i'm good it's like <laughs> no you're not you're just it not was, good it was so like the whole ordeal was like was weird where it was like it started off on monday where like i went to the clinic and i had to i had to beg these people just to look at my face i had to just be, I'd be like look like you're not gonna get it like can i just take my yeah, mask off real right, quick right because like, like my mask is it. covering yeah. it and i'm like well like, can i just can i just, and they'd, they'd be like yes but be careful i'm like oh, look we're I got the it's vaccine. Not real. It's you not have a medical real. fucking just off, right? I have the vaccine. Yeah. Shut up. Can I just take my mask off for a second? And, and then they were like, "Dude, yo, like, what's that?" <laughs> Dude, and then so, so they were like, "All right, if it's not, I think I said this on the podcast when I was on last time on Tuesday. I, they were like, if it's not good on Wednesday, go to the hospital." Right. So I was like, "And by uh, the way, this like Feidelberg even getting up off his ass to go to the clinic and then go to the hospital and shit, like you know, you know what I mean? We we haven't gone to doctors in in years in unless years. like you have to go." And it was. It was a Wednesday morning. Wednesday, like Tuesday night, I didn't sleep. Wednesday morning, I, I like I couldn't breathe. I, I couldn't swallow. I couldn't do anything. I mean, you look so, disgusted. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna go to the hospital now. So I got up Wednesday after like you know little winks of little sleep, and I go to the hospital, and like pretty quickly they were like, hmm, mm. this, this isn't good. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, all right, and it was honestly kind of awesome because I just I, I didn't like have anyone come stay with me. I was like like the. Hospital is no place for a healthy person. I, I'm good. Like I'm just. Yeah. I, I was there alone for pretty much the whole time. And dream come true. Yeah. I mean, I had my headphones. I, I actually, I had to have my girlfriend bring me my headphone charger and phone charger because right. I was just. Because then you're good. I was just chilling. I, I, yeah. I both were like by like 3 p.m. Both were like gone. Dead. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, I'm gonna need these chargers. Yeah. And, and they wouldn't let me leave the hospital. Right. Because they were like, we don't know what's wrong with you, bro. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, about to have another outbreak or some shit. Dude, but it was like I it was like I, I, I got tested for different shit for 14 hours straight on Wednesday. Where it was like I mean, that's not normal. It would dude, they were like injecting me with iodine. I felt like I was gonna piss myself all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you inject with iodine, you get hot and you feel like you're gonna pee. Really? Um, is that true or is that just you? No, no, no. They, no. they told you that? Yeah, okay. yeah, they're like, you feel like you're, you're gonna feel like you're gonna piss. Yeah. I was like, all right. <laughs> and, they, and they're like sticking <laughs> me in CAT scan machines and MRI machines and the yeah. fucking doing blood work and this and that. And nothing. And then and nothing. But then the doctor came out on, at the hospital and he's like, So what does the clinic say? And I was like, nothing. No. Really? Like they kind of just gave me medicine. He's like, yeah, they're treating you for gonorrhea. <laughs> <laughs> that's what those. That's what City MD does. Right, and I was like, I was like, I was like, well, they asked me if I eat pussy, but <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, I ain't no bitch. But, but twenty twenty one, man, they, I'm a generous lover. Of like, course, they, I eat they, pussy. They, like, didn't follow. They actually said they're like. Now, could your partner, could he, could she or he? And I was like, get the she! The I fuck is she? Are you dick? saying I've been sucking dick because I haven't been sucking? This is not a dick sucking injury. <laughs> got real defensive real fast on it. <laughs> Who told you? You've been talking I, I, to Kevin? I, I got it a was not reflex. a fucking dick. <laughs> I, you should see my gag reflex. Yeah. I don't suck dick, man. There's no way it could be my throat. No, I told them that. Like, as soon as they brought the consoles, I was like, just so you know, I'm going to gag. 
Because it's been pussy I've been eating. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it's Pride Month, and you're like, I ain't no gay, all right. <laughs> and, and then so like they were, it went back and forth between being like, all right, it was like people like overly like, are you dying? And it's like, no, I'm not dying. Yeah. But there were definitely moments, just considering the fact that I chew tobacco all the fucking time, where I was mm-hmm. like, I was like, oh boy, is this the one? Right. <laughs> I was I was worried about that Dude, too. My mom was, was like... proud of me that I was telling the doctors I chew tobacco. I was like, yeah, mom, I know it could be an issue. Okay, I've been I've been like, just so you know. I chewed tobacco a lot. Were you thinking there's a chance this is it? This is throat cancer? I thought for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. No, that's. Like, I, I. I. It ran through my mind once or twice. It was going. Like, when was, you said biopsy, I was like, here, here we go. <laughs> it was. This motherfucker's got the big C. The only thing. The only thing that was great. like for for downloads. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. if you want to go ahead and get cancer this summer? I'm actually going to get fucking can- get fucking insurance on my fucking throat and jaw well yeah good be- luck now you know what your fucking premium for that will well, be fucking whatever man i'll fucking get like one of those fucking dick things that that what's his name was fucking the porn star with the dick all of them uh, um Ke- kieran lee he, he, he had, short like, his dick yeah because like if i fuck if i if my throat goes bro this is it no i hear you but this, i'm just saying when, 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 you, when you we are in, done when you <laughs> st- <laughs> not we i am done when you step in <laughs> yeah. and you're like i'd like to ensure this thing that i poison every <laughs> single day with carcinogens <laughs> and I, I i get like a sugary candy stuck in there on the regular but like, yeah we can ensure those golden pipes of yours for about ten thousand dollars a month <laughs> you disgusting specimen <laughs> imagine but, that that would be the most Feidelberg like end be like the one thing he like stumbled his way into he just he can't talk anymore can't imagine if you anymore. just became mute I gotta learn how to write again oh fucking hey yeah, god no. damn it I'll fucking go be a fucking uh <laughs> fucking auto body shop worker I'll do the register um and <laughs> but the so then like eventually they come out and they're like they're like look man like we're not gonna figure it out here like we gotta send you to a new hospital and I was like Whoa. Okay. Where were you? Um, Which hospital did you at first? Lenox Hill, Greenwich, Greenwich Village. So they, they said you did just the real Lenox Hill. To Lenox Hill, yeah. I, yeah. I, thought, I thought when you said that, that like, like if one hospital just totally gives up, if NYU <laughs> was like, send them to Lenox, we don't know. But yeah, the Greenwich one is kind of like the fake one, and the Upper East Side yeah. one is like the real one. So and, at first I thought it was just like an entire medical like fucking <laughs> you know unit being like we got nothing. I don't know, go to the other guys. But yeah, when you're any in any time though, you're getting transferred to new hospitals. Like, uh, bro, but they put me so like I was like, all right, I'll, I'll I'll get a cab, and they're like, well, no, you can't do that. I was like, why? This this and and, like, and like, honestly, he the guy when I asked why, he's kind of like. Hmm. I don't know. I've never been asked. This I hadn't before. really thought about yeah. it. <laughs> no, and he ended up he's get, like, he's like, we'll, we'll take your IV out and put a new one in. And I was like, oh yeah, fuck that. Never mind. I'll take the ambulance. Did um, you pay for the ambulance? I, I that would have been that's the ultimate Feidelberg getting bowled over, where it's like, <laughs> I'm gonna take the Uber because the Uber's gonna cost twenty one dollars and the ambulance is gonna cost uh, twenty one hundred. And he was like, no, 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 you got to take the Uber. Uh, you got to take the ambulance, and you just got you just got steamrolled, didn't you? Kevin, I'll say this. Yeah. <laughs> when I got there. Uh, I was asked to sign an iPad. And I said, "What's this for?" They said, "Billing." Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so I mean, that's gonna be a couple grand down the top. So, <laughs> that's gonna be everybody that. knows. Like, unless you are like on the verge of death, you don't take the. But evidence. I didn't call. Like, I, I, I obviously, I, it was a bit of a joke. Like, I, 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 I felt like it, it. I, my, my text in the video conveyed enough yeah. that it wasn't an emergency. Right. Where, like, I called it a cab ride. It said the Wii U, Wii U's. Like, I, I wasn't like, guys, look, I'm dying. Like, yeah, I felt yeah, like I was yeah. enough. Like. Hey, don't we worry about it. About this, yeah. Um, but then when we get, I get to the second hospital, which was fucking goddamn chaos. <laughs> like I, yeah. I don't know what happened last Wednesday, but the both emergency rooms were scene. just. I, I got to the emergency room on Wednesday morning before anyone. I was like the first person there. It was, right. I got there like nine thirty, probably something like that, and I was like first guy in. Boom, took care of me. Very quickly, there were 48 people there, which is max capacity for that emergency Jesus room. Christ. And then I get to this one, it was like a war zone. Mm. And But the fucking, the... the uh, Summertime, man. Summertime in the city. Shit gets wild. Dude, the EMT apologized to me. He's like, sorry about the traffic. I'm like, up here. I was like, oh, yeah. If only we were in some kind of fucking vehicle where we could skip traffic. <laughs> like, it's, it what, would be, what, what are the rules of when you can and can't use the it thing? It would have been the switch. a Let's literal go. flick of the finger. Yeah. No traffic anymore. We are on a magic sorry carpet ride to Lenox Hill on the UE. Yes. But no, this motherfucker <laughs> just was like, sorry about the traffic. After he put me in a fucking chair and then raised me up at, at the at the Lenox Hill in Grand Village, raised me up to 
abnormal heights. Heights just completely, like he wanted the whole fucking emergency room to see, hey, we're bringing this guy out. I was above the barriers between cubbies that you have in the, the cubicles, fucking thing, yeah. little cubicles. <laughs> I was above them, and as he raised me up, he went, you're like Simba. And I said, buddy, just get me in an ambulance. This is ridiculous. I can't breathe. Don't call me Simba. Put me in a tree, put me in a fucking car, and put the Wii U Wii U's on. <laughs> Dude, to acknowledge the traffic. Traffic. Like, if, if you can't use the siren, fine, whatever. But don't then rub it in by saying, <laughs> hey, man, you know the one thing that you thought would be good about an ambulance? We're not going to do that. Yeah, like, uh, just fucking Holy slow. shit. But I, it took, so, I was in that car for, like, probably 45 minutes to an hour because it was 5 p.m. on a Wednesday. Absolutely. And I, like, it, I was farting up a storm. Oh. Like, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> it's just disgusting, you know. I was I like, was, why? I was, why? The, it's not the like, bumps, you know. maybe. The bumps. <laughs> the bumps make you fart. I don't know. Bumps in the road, you like upset stomach. He's kind of shaking everything up. I, like the woman. The woman the goes bumps. So woman EMT goes. I'm gonna sit behind you. <laughs> no I heavens. I don't know if you want to do yeah. that, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Downwind for me on the on the fucking FDR. Watch out! Yikes! So so I get to the fucking emergency room at the other Lennox Hill. Kelly Keegs texts me. She's like, uh, she's like, oh wow, this is great for your brand. Only like people go to the Upper East Side Lennox Hill, and I was like, Keegs, let me tell you about my what I'm seeing right now. Okay, there's a uh, first of all, I gotta show you this. I gotta show you how small the bays are. They are insanity at this emergency room and granted it was probably pretty full and so like that played a factor brother do you know my history you think i haven't been at the lennox hill fuck it oh those are really small <laughs> that must be like a covid thing dude, or something dude I it's was, just the width of a bed it's just the width i could i could touch both people and i was touched by i was both gonna say on the other side of me i had a run where i was at the lennox hill emergency room like you know like Few times a year in the in the in the like the mid two thousands. I was like, hey, I'm back, guys. Another surgery. How we doing? But that <laughs> is crazy. I mean, it, like like literally, our beds were just together. It was it, we were at war. Like yeah. I said, it was like triage. War. It, it was yeah. an absolute triage. mash out here. And this woman next to me, I actually videoed myself and sent it to you. Yeah, uh -huh. I had a homeless woman come in with dementia. Uh, I only know this because I overheard the doctor saying it. Um, and she she was just pinned down in the bed. Yeah, like, hallelujah, hallelujah, uh, hallelujah, for, like, hours on end. But the thing that ugh. that I was fine with, what sucked is that I could see her feet. And it looked like her feet looked like she had been kidnapped by an unruly gang of children and then tortured by having her feet be used in whack-a-mole. Like, it was, they were just mangled, Kevin. <laughs> like, just... Absolutely, just like beaten, just fucking mangled, like twisted and gnarled like a willow tree. It was, it was the toes, the toes, oh, the, the nails? toe nails. Don't get me started on the toe nails. The heels, it the was, bunions, it was, the the, corns, not much bunion, bunion but the. It, like, she looked like one of those uh, like Asian women who are they just put their feet in a little thing and cinch them and they just yeah, never grow. Yeah. But they were huge. <laughs> they, but they were fucking trees. It wow. was it was a mess. She's got roots. And then the guy on the other side of me again. It, I'll text this picture to Nick so you can see how close the people were to me. They weren't like across the room. This guy, this guy just wouldn't fucking put his pants on and he was just like just kind of keeled over and by the way both of them keep just pulling the curtains around they don't Ugh. fucking care about anything so i just see this guy's ass and i'm just waiting for him to shit at me mm. like, <laughs> like he it was it was just like just it was a fucking ass in my face yeah it was a homeless ass in my face <sighs> and i was just waiting for it to fucking vesuvius so, like i was just, like I, I was just staring down the barrel of the business end being like oh, this well is, to be fair they were probably is, like I, this this is white boy next to me who's just farting up a storm bro, so <laughs> bro i was sitting on the edge of my bed in street clothes like like someone who'd been arrested and was like look i'm not putting on a jumpsuit because i'm not like <laughs> these people <laughs> like, like they gave me the, leaving my fucking flannel on they gave me the johnny in the socks and yeah, i was like i won't no, need no, that yeah, thank you very much fucking, I'm, 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 I'm better than these yeah. people here that's so true you put that on you guys you can't tell the difference right. you know? yeah. you're all there's, in the same class a stark difference yes. between me and the people who that's are here that's hilarious but the then eventually so i'm there for probably and I'm this is what for, now you're like there you've been this ordeal is now going on like 18 hours. I, I, it was, yeah, probably something like that. Jesus. And so, so you haven't slept or anything. I haven't slept at all. Just watch a shitload of Seinfeld. And, uh, the ENT finally comes like midnight is probably. And, uh, go and ahead and tell the people what, uh, what your uncle does for a living, by the way, not uncle, 
cousin. Cousin. <laughs> cousin. Couldn't, couldn't tell them what your cousin does for a living. I know. I'm not going to tell that yet. I didn't get it because okay. it was later. The So this the ENT, ear, nose, and throat doctor comes. And the first thing she says to me is she goes, oh, you look really good for someone in your condition. And I was like, what, what is my condition? condition? What are you talking about? I was, like, I was like, no one has told me anything because my mom's not here to make them. Yeah, Like, I've just been, just been quietly dude, dude, the number one reason you need someone in the hospital with you is to be the, like, like Go get answers. Um, yeah, like, no. like it's like why you need a lawyer or an agent to do the negotiating. It's like I need to preserve the relationship with these people who are going to be like sticking me with needles <laughs> and cutting me open. They can't dislike me. They need to dislike you. Yeah. But we got to get some answers or some pain medicine or some. We got to. You got to get me moved or whatever. So you got to. I need a, a proxy to be an asshole for me, bro. I was without a doubt the laughing stock of the CIA. Like the doctors and nurses were like, that dude doesn't give a shit at all. Like he doesn't even care if we talk to him. I'm sure He's they were filling out a chart and they were like, suicidal. Yep. Why? It's like, have you seen him? He doesn't. He doesn't care at all. This man does clearly does not care about his life. He's not asking a single question. Bro, they were like, like they must. They must have. Been, they're like, let's just. I, I probably turned into an experiment. Like, let's just see that's, how long. We that's can. what I mean. Let's see if we can charge him rent. <laughs> Let's see if he'll just fucking pay to stay here. Like, like I, I'm, I'm guaranteeing <laughs> you there were there were young kids watching, interns watching, where they were like, all right, so this here is a patient <laughs> who, like, is going to ask no questions. He's going to have no problem with anything. We're going to teach you how to manage it. I mean, <laughs> that you were no doubt something they had not seen in, like, years. Absolutely ever. People running around the whole time, like, can you grab that? Like, I was like, eh, like sure. my, I, I'm, I'm charged. I, 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 I got a little that. annoyed when I had to stand behind the bed because the charger wouldn't reach me laying in it. <laughs> but I just stood behind the bed and just texted If stuff. they... I could if they brought you like a mop and a bucket, they, you probably would have been like the janitor. They could have they put you to work. Hey, can you clean this up while you're watching? Sure. sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, thank you. You are a COVID hero. Thank you so much for getting it. Give me that broom. Give me that. Get out of here. Go put your feet up. Go sit next to the guy who's gonna poop on you. Or you're like, <laughs> you're disgusting neck. But the but then so finally that she's like, she's like, you're good. Like, I was like, what does that mean? She's like, Well, I made you an appointment with the ENT tomorrow. I was like, all right, cool. So I go home, go to bed, go to another specialist the next day. And uh, she did not make me an appointment. <laughs> she just lied about that. <laughs> um, but the doctor. No no patient has ever gotten less respect <laughs> than John Feidelberg at Lenox Hill. I get there. I show them the paper. And they're like, yeah, you don't have an appointment. And I was like, well, wow. they told me you made me one. They're like, when? At midnight last night? And I was like, repeating yeah, it back to me really sounds a little ridiculous. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> that, that checks out. Yeah. So you went at like a, sp a certain time and everything? Yeah, yeah, 3.30. And uh, remember wow. right after the interview, I was like, all right, yeah. I got to go. Um, and uh, so the doctor, the doctor saw me anyway. And I haven't been to a doctor in 10 years. Yeah. And it is, it is a wild experience. Like they are just, they're just selling you on things. Yeah. They're just, they're just trying to get you to buy like their special. It was, <laughs> it was crazy. First of all, he was, I told him right away to make my mom proud. Um, I told him I chew tobacco pretty often. And he's like, he's like, okay, uh, how much do you chew? And I was like, about a can a day. And he's like, wow, that's a, that's a lot. How long have you been doing that? I was like, well, I've been doing it probably like 17 years, but you know, that much probably 10 to 12 years. And he's like, whew. That is, <laughs> he's like, that is so much tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> that is a <laughs> staggering amount. Right? And, I, and I, I swear to God this is true. He checks me. He go check on my mouth. And he fucking puts a camera down my nose. Uh -huh. And it's like, I sent, I sent you a picture of the camera they send down yeah. there. Uh -huh. It's just fucking, it's like, I mean, they're like, they make me making the noises going, -hee, like, like make my voice box do different things, to like check different things. Did you puke? And, and I'm watching it. No, I'm yeah. watching it. And like, but, uh, by the way, he shit? also did this. He goes, they fucking stick the camera under your tongue. So like to warm it up, I guess, so uh -huh. it doesn't get foggy. Like a thermometer? Gun? Yeah. And then they check both your nostrils. And it's not like your nostrils not going up, it comes into my head. Yeah. And they check both nostrils with it to see which one's more open. And the motherfucker stuck it right back in my mouth uh. after deciding on his nostril. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, oh, he goes, open up again. And I go, and I kinda look at him. And he goes, Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, like, there's nothing else. He's gotta put my fucking boogers back in my fucking head. That's gross. Um, but he checks it all out, checks my mouth, checks it, and he goes, and I fucking kid you not, he goes, if you're being honest about how much you dip, you show no signs of it. Wow. And I was like, are you calling me a bitch? <laughs> you calling me a fucking pussy? Give me a tin right now. I'll fucking do the whole I'll goddamn thing. double horseshoe right I'll now, I'll do the whole thing right in your fucking Dude, that, face. that doesn't surprise me, though. Yeah, you, you, you're one of those guys, and, and much to your dismay, <laughs> you're going to live to like 150. <laughs> And you're going to be like, I just drank whiskey and chewed tobacco and ate Sour Patch Kids for the rest of my life. <laughs> Dude, but the, uh, 
But then, like, they, he's like, he's like, all right. So, like, when you were born, when you were an embryonic sack. We don't need that, man. Yeah. Just say like when I was little. Yeah. <laughs> um, say when I was seven. <laughs> um, these like you're an embryonic sac. Like your your thyroid moves down. So again, some people's break off, and um, and yours yours you have a little piece down. It's like a centimeter. He says you give a piece that's way too low, and he's like I thought that might be the cause of this, but it's not. Um, but what and that that piece would be like infected or dead? I or guess something? Like, I don't just go. I don't really know. Just floating around in there, <laughs> and he's like. He's like, do you want? It? Like, some people like have it removed because there's like a very, very, very minuscule chance it turns to cancer. Do you want it move removed? We don't really do it anymore. And I was like, do I want the elective surgery in my neck and throat that you don't really do anymore? I was like, I'll probably skip that one, man. <laughs> and then, and then, We're not really sure how to do this anymore, but we can, we can figure it out. <laughs> like, let's slice you open, pick it out there. And then he's like, all right, all right. And he checks out, like, all right, he's not gonna buy that. And he's, like, <laughs> he's like, your nostrils, like, you know, do you snore? And I was like, yeah, I snore like a motherfucker. Yeah. I was like, I was like you talk to anyone who's ever slept. In oh the my same, god, in the we same could have fixed this. Vicinity as me. He's like, he's like, yeah, I can see in your nostrils. You want to get surgery to fix that? <laughs> I was like. Like not right now. I'm, I'm focused on the throat thing at the, at the moment. <laughs> like we can get around to that, maybe. Oh, this guy's pitching a nose right? job while this <laughs> yeah. dude's neck has a fucking goiter in it. Although you should have taken the nose job. I didn't even think. I didn't even think of the snoring, man. We could have fixed dude, that whole snoring issue. I'm, I'm probably gonna do that. I'm yeah. probably gonna do that. Yeah, he probably it, sold it, me it, on it. it. Yeah, I was just saying, he, he said like this. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, surprise, surprise. John got got steamrolled there. And then he, he, and then he said he goes, it would fix the snoring. He, he said it would, it would very much help with the snoring. Yeah. And then and, and sleeping. I, I I like an uncle who got that once. And he's like, I didn't realize people slept. slept. Yeah, yeah. And like, well, my dad got the sleep apnea machine. He started having dreams again. And yeah, he, he was like, he, he was not sleeping sound enough for like REM cycles mm. and shit for like four yeah, years. I don't dream. People get he, mad at me every time I my, say it. My I'm dad, like, oh. my dad goes to bed in the seven o'clock hour, <laughs> primarily because he hates my mother and he wants to <laughs> escape it by being unconscious. But he's like excited to go dream now. He wakes up and he's like, it was fucking amazing, yeah. man. Tells me all I had his whole other life, yeah. it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, you haven't slept in 50 years, dad. <laughs> but yeah, and then he was like, he was like, uh, what do you think about a sleep test? You want to take one of those? And I was like, no, man, I want to find out the throat thing. <laughs> Fix this. <laughs> But that was it. He gave me he gave me a different. Uh, actually, no, the hospital was the one who gave me the prescription for a different. Like, dude, they put so many antibiotics in me. It yeah. was crazy. I had Just I had all. IVs. I was getting shots. I got these horse pills. I take now. Fucking monsters. Twice a day. I I have to take them with Just ice like cream. Regular old. But <laughs> <laughs> no, you do not. Yeah, no, for a treat. <laughs> <laughs> like, good job, Johnny. You remember <laughs> your pills? <laughs> yeah, I take it with a bowl of ice. You, you, I was actually because I'm not <laughs> drinking with them, so I was like. I was like, oh man, I'm gonna lose weight. It's gonna be pretty sick for like like two weeks. And uh, and no, I was like, I have, a, I have about I have about two bowls of ice cream a night now, a day. I mean, two bowls of ice cream a day. <laughs> yeah, start the day off with one, nine o'clock, and then another it's one. It's called breakfast and, and, and dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and I do it right too. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I do it right. Dress it up. <laughs> yeah, these aren't just little fucking bowls of ice cream. <laughs> How many, how many scoops are we talking? Kevin, Full bowl? Kevin, don't even get me started. I'm surprised you even put it into a bowl. You don't just eat out of the pint thing. No, no. Oh, not the way I do it. Kevin, first of all, I've ordered from a Cuban restaurant a bunch of uh, uh, fried fried plantains. Okay. So I pop those. Wow. And I pop those in a fucking uh, in a mug. Yeah. I'm a mug guy. I pop those in a mug, put a little peanut butter and chocolate on that, put those in the microwave, Melt up the peanut butter and chocolate, mix it up with the fucking uh, with the plant, the fried plantains, fried sweet plantains, of course, and then I do a couple scoops of ice cream into a different mug. What kind of ice cream? Uh, just vanilla, because it gets too much if you have other things. Sure. When you have the plantains sure. and, then, and the melted Don't peanut have butter too much. and the melted chocolate, mm -hmm. and then I and I get a bag of flips pretzels and I and I pound that into a little crisp. Right, and then I fucking dump that on top of it, and then and then, and then I top it with some mini M and M's, and then I take my medicine, <laughs> and a little pill on top to boot. Yeah. That's, that's the cherry on top. My antibiotic. You are you are a child. That, that's probably what they were like. They were like, this man child is here, and we don't understand his DNA is is that of a of a thirty two year old man. But everything about him appears to be a small child. You are a medical <laughs> marvel. Like, These are the pills you're going to take. I was like, with ice cream, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just like regular old like penicillin or some shit didn't knock this out? Amoxicillin? No. Like whatever? No, it's, I'm taking uh, I don't fucking know what I'm 
Yeah. Yeah. And, <sighs> and they're, it and begins they just, with an A, but it's not a mock. And they just said, like, it's going good. It's going down so you can go home. Yeah. But yeah. no answer. Oh, yeah. But anyway, so, yeah, I'm going to see another Ear, Nose, and Throat Specialist this week, uh, who is my cousin. My mom told me that after seeing the, th- the third doctor. She goes, by the way, your cousin is uh, not your cousin, my dad's it's like cousin. The, the premier ENT in the world. Is, is like literally one of the best ENTs in the world, lives in New York City. And I was like, would you want to see her? Like, yeah, Polly. Yeah, I would I'd probably want to see her. She's like, yeah, that is a good idea. She gets like flown out to like when kings get a no- runny nose. It's like, week ago. Week ago well, would have been used that, awesome information. <laughs> My woman, my girl. <laughs> so in her own world, she doesn't give a shit about her own son Dude. dying. <laughs> I've been, I've watched a lot of TV. I haven't seen. It. I watched Hacks. For anyone who's watching Hacks uh, or has seen Hacks and wants to meet my mother, you already have Deborah. It's Deborah. Deborah Vance. Is, <laughs> that is one of the best like comparisons. If someone ever said that about me, I'd be like, oh my god. <laughs> all that I do, all I aspire to be, Dude, is Deborah. When she's being mean to the. Uh, the girl, the writer. No, not the writer. The uh, nurse. Uh huh. And, uh-huh. and she goes, "Oh, she's Russian. She'll deal with it." <laughs> that is I was like, "Polly, yeah, that's Polly." A lot. Of, I, 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 now that you say that, I can see a lot of things like where she's like, "Oh, he'll be fine." Yeah. Oh, that doesn't count or whatever. Yeah. Like little things like that. Just in Polly's world, that's oh, all that matters. Russian. She'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people were buzzing uh, here in the office because a lot of people did remember. That you uh, you called it and said you were gonna die by July fourth. I fucking called. So I mean, we that came, was suicide, we came though. pretty close. That one was suicide. <laughs> <laughs> that was a straight up <laughs> reference to scheduling your own suicide. That one. We're gonna go with a ten spot on that one. That was insane. I made it clear when I said that. I was like, boy, I hope I make it to the fourth. That was, July. I'll throw the other one in there. We'll make it a clean eleven. <laughs> It's, uh, you know what's bullshit, by the way? Uh, I don't know who decided this back in the day. Whoever decided the seasons, we need to reschedule them. Okay. Like, it's summer right now, but it's, like, not technically summer, uh, or, like, it's, like, barely summer, yeah, you know what I mean? Equinox hasn't like, like June, summer solstice hasn't Like, hit. June 24th or some shit is the, is the summer. No. It's, like, June fucking 1st, you know? June, July, August, those are summer months. Mm. And, like, it's not the winter until, like, the middle of December. Yeah, now get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, just, I, we just need it, to restructure. It it, 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 it's Just like we need to restructure the weeks. To what? Sunday doesn't start the week. Monday starts the week. Monday starts the week. Right. Redo Sunday the ends the week. Redo the calendar. Right, yep. right. The, the like, yes, yep. I agree with that. 100%. Because that really is the toughest. When I have this argument with people about the beginning or the end of the week, when they throw the calendar out there, it is a tough one to argue. It's, a, it, it's but like, but well, also, I don't know, some idiot who made a calendar got it wrong. Right, yeah, just use, use your own common sense. Right. When you're on a Sunday, are you feeling like, when you're hanging out on the couch on a Sunday, are you feeling like, oh, get started my week, the week. Stuff. When uh, Is Sunday a part of the weekend? Yeah. yeah. It's the end, the of, end the of the week. It's the <laughs> end of the weekend. It's, it's, so it's the most end of the week possible. It's the most simply logical thing it's probably fucking in this world insane. right now. It's fucking insane. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Do you not have a fucking brain? Okay, sure. Then Monday starts the week. Oh. Well, you fart into the couch and order dominoes. <laughs> yeah. Great start to the farting. week. A lot of farting today. You've been farting a lot, huh? Well, I haven't been drinking much, so I've been having good bowel movements. Oh. <laughs> Heavens to <laughs> Betsy. I said that one on purpose. <laughs> but I'll tell you, yeah. But it's also real, real isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a joke, but also very serious. God <laughs> damn. We, we, we found yeah. the solution. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Christ on the cross. <laughs> Just good, clean poops. Oh. God. My. <laughs> Regular, too, every morning. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Fuck. Between that and Barstool vs. America, uh, the entire episode, 30 minutes of Glenny Balls just being afraid to poop. It was just every every cut of the camera was back to Glenny being like, where am I going to poop? Where am I going to poop? I don't know. Go talk to Fidelberg. He's pooping all the fucking time, apparently. Yeah. Christ. Um, it's it's our regularly scheduled time to uh, make our, our regular PSA that uh, summer fucking sucks. It's the worst season of all. And uh, these words are brought to you by Helix Sleep because they know that 
when, when it's the summertime and everything's going to be hot and sweaty, you got to have a nice mattress that keeps you cool and keeps you comfortable. Otherwise, it's impossible to sleep it's during this godforsaken month. i got to blast my AC, and i got to sl sleep in one of those Helix mattresses that is temperature controlled. Not even like – I'm not talking like the, 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 the memory foam type of temperature control. I'm just talking about where that, that like scientific shit where, it, I don't know, it just somehow keeps the air yeah. flowing or whatever, I moisture exactly wicking. What whatever they're talking about that keeps you cool and comfortable. It's like the other side of the pillow, but it's just constantly like that with Helix Sleep. They uh, what, what you do is you log on and you take a little quiz about the way that you like to sleep on Helix. You go to uh, helixsleep.com and you talk about like who you are and how you sleep and what you like to do in bed and how you like to lay and all this shit. And they put together the mattress that's customized for you. Do you sleep on your back, on your stomach? Do you move around all night? Uh, do you like it soft? Do you like it medium? Do you like it firm? Uh, do you like it this size, that size, this model, that model? And they'll report back being like this is the mattress for you uh, like i'm gonna go on there and be like, i fucking hate the summer <laughs> what is the best bed for that bam there it is also uh i i need i think i need to upgrade my bed because uh whenever i have my kids they they inevitably come out of their room and they crawl into bed with me and now they're just like full-size grown humans <laughs> and they both fall out of my bed the other night <laughs> and so at one point Do they wake up do they so so uh one time, yeah, I, like, I like fall and just waking up on the floor. Like, what the fuck that's happened, happened too. <laughs> yeah. That's that's happened. Uh, but this last time, Shay wakes up in the middle of the night. She's in the bed and she was like, uh, "Dad, I'm cold. Can you get me the blanket?" Like it fell off, and I, I'm like, "Hey, I'll sleep." And I like pull, like tug the blanket. It doesn't go anywhere. I'm like, tugging it. It's like pretty fucking heavy, and I'm like, "Is this tucked in or whatever?" So I give it a good yank, and it turned out Keegan had fallen out of the bed into the mattress into the, the the comforter so when i pulled it he kind of went like he did like a like a like a flop and like hit and it was like dad what and i was like oh man it's like get back in the bed so anyway i think i need a larger uh helix mattress you guys are gonna have to hook it up uh take the two minute sleep quiz they'll match you up with your customized mattress get the best sleep of your life 10 year warranty uh you can try it out for 100 nights if you don't have the best sleep uh they'll pick it back up for you gets delivered easy and peasy in that nice little box now uh so it's the easiest process to get the best sleep ever. Go to helixsleep.com slash KFC. Get $200 off and two free pillows. F pillows are like $1,000 a pop now. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So this deal is is astronomical. It's helix, H-E-L-I-X, sleep.com slash KFC. Get $200 off plus free pillows. People seem to question me on the validity or the the veracity or the truth behind this take. I do it every year. I've done it every year probably since I've been about 30 it's it's one of the truest things I say. I fucking hate the summer. And it's not for everyone. I used to love the summer. So if you are a kid in school, the summer's the best. I don't expect you to agree with me. If you are like in your mid-20s or even if you're older in life but you're hanging on to like your childhood basically. Uh, not your childhood but like your, your, your adult like party years. The summer's awesome. I used to love going to the Hamptons, going to the Jersey Shore, sloppy tuna, fucking beach, pool, all that shit. When those things stop, when you're not in school, so you don't just have three months off for no fucking reason. Uh, what, what, what a rule that was, by the way. Just like, it's getting hot out. We're just going to shut it down for a few months. <laughs> uh, when you well, don't... in Tallahassee, like, they, it's, it, I think that is, it is the heat. That's why they stop? It's probably air conditioning and like, yeah, all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, it would... I started school like earlier than like my friends. Right, they to wanted to get you in so you could get you in out in like August because they got to end in like May. By the way, it's no fucking better. No, like, August, August, August in Tallahassee the sucks. Right, though. you're just getting the, the the hot months in the beginning instead yeah. of the end. It's kind of crazy. Uh, so if you're not if you don't get summers off, and you're not like taking advantage of the 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 beach life because if you're like an adult with like <laughs> fucking responsibilities or you're not partying, and responsibilities just a job. Yeah, really. I have responsibilities that prevent you doing things. You have a job, things. and you, and then, then you have the weekends. And like, so, like I said, when I was like in my mid twenties, I would go to the Jersey Shore or the Hamptons, and it was worth traveling every single weekend because the beach was awesome, the bars were awesome, partying in the house, fucking people, getting all your friends together. When that all stopped, like, like I don't want to travel every fucking weekend anymore. You know right. what I mean? I don't have that fun to look Dude, forward I to. I did do it. I, uh, probably, right, probably around late twenties. Like when I first went to New York. I went to Newport every single weekend. Every weekend. And that, I mean, that's crazy because you're you're going a long way. I would always do Long Island or Jersey. But, yeah, you're going all the way up to Rhode Island, and it's amazing. So, at that point, summer, the, the best times of my life have been those ages during the summer. But now, summer's the worst. If you don't, if you don't have that vacation and you don't do any of the fun shit, summer is just your regular old mediocre life. But now you're sweating. 
It's and now you have to wear shorts like a goddamn fucking loser. Looking ridiculous, 30-year-old <laughs> plus man wearing shorts. <laughs> and your legs are pale because you don't just lay out in the sun anymore. <laughs> you know, boy, I got Portnoy chirping me. Be like, oh, yeah, the summer sucks, KFC. Well, yeah, I don't have $200 million. <laughs> it's not a fucking fantasy land for me where everything is a fucking uh, vacation. If you are rich and living in, like, the tropical world all year round, yeah, it's probably pretty fucking awesome. But if you're in the city, in New York City or any city, really... Summer's terrible. Yeah, like I'm, I'm waiting to find a, a hooligan child and ask him to, to <laughs> fucking uh, break off the fire. The uh, yes, thing, like fire party in the what fucking uh, fire what? Uh, fire hydrant. Fire hydrant. Like, like let's fucking let's get a fucking big gulp. Let's put it on there. Let's direct this because like I can't do. I can't. I can't get out to the Dude. Hamptons. I, I've never been to the Hamptons and on the way back been like that was worth it. And yep. so I'm not Four going out hours. there. And I'm just like, I'll, I'll stand in the middle of 7th Avenue. What, was it? what did Trump say? Like, I could shoot someone in the middle of 5th Avenue. And yep. like, I'll stand in the middle of 5th Avenue, put the fucking fire out, Trump, Trump can shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 I'm Dude, fine either way. When one, I, one or the other. I need a fire hydrant or a bullet. When I take my kids to the park in the Bronx, there's this, uh, you put your, your hand on this little uh, pole, put a little handprint on it, and it, Sends off these like sprinklers. It's, it's it's like summer in the hood. It's like <laughs> just it's like a grimy blacktop pl uh, playground. But you can just put your hand in and sprinklers pop off. And I'm like, this is what we need to do to make this season bearable. <laughs> we're in the middle of the fucking Bronx and we're all gonna play in this fucking like recycled water in a goddamn public playground. Fuck this season, man. Again, I mean, yeah, it's like a poor people summer. <laughs> if you have if you have if you have money and no responsibilities, summer's probably awesome. Everybody else out here. What's to enjoy if you're like, you know, mid thirties with the family, with responsibilities, with the job, not partying and not getting summers off. It's just now uncomfortable. Dude, I, this morning I fucking, I worked out, whatever, not to brag. Um, and, uh, Who works out after like almost dying. You're <laughs> such a fucking asshole. But yeah, I got a new lease on life, Kev. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I got a, got a new lease on life and I, so I worked out this morning and I took a shower and I was still so hot and disoriented and Ugh. tired from working out. This is a disgusting story. <laughs> I just like, so you know, Jack. I just buckle up. It's not that gross. It's kind of gross. gross. I sat down after the shower. I dried off. I sat down on my bed and was just like, Whew. and I just kind of sat there for a while. And just again, I was like disoriented and tired. I'd, I'd exercise. And I sat there for long enough to the point where I, I was so wet again. And I was like, and so disoriented enough where I was like, I don't. I don't even remember if I showered or not. Like, I don't remember what this water is from. <laughs> could be water. Like, could be another round of sweat. Like it, I, 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 I still don't know. Doesn't to happen be, in the fall, John. To be John. totally honest, I just put on a shirt and we came here. Doesn't happen I, in the fall. Doesn't I happen don't in the know winter. If I was That's like, disgusting. <laughs> like, that is disgusting. Like, like it was, I, guess I shower. I could definitively say that. That is but disgusting. But I don't know if I was just just not dry or if I was just sweating again. And judging by how much this shirt stuck to me, I, it was sweat. It was it was sweat. It, it, it was sweat. It was, it, was, it, was, it was sweat. I was super sweat. But oh. and then oh, don't get, the fucking worst part of summer is again all that stuff. But it's the fucking ensembles because I can't. This is always my problem with things. I can't dress nice in the summer. Mm. I look like a fucking homeless teenager. Yeah, all the time. Look at me right now. Yeah, I look do. ridiculous. You do. I look ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know what the problem? I mean, these shorts that everyone says is a bathing suit. It's not. They're just waterproof shorts. But this, they're different. They're different things. They're different things. They're just shorts to swim in. Not a bathing suit. Yeah. Sure, you can call them shorts to swim in. Don't tell me I'm wearing a bathing suit because I'm not wearing a bathing suit. These are bathing suits. Those are bathing suits. These are bathing suits available right now in the Barstool Sports Store. We got the uh, good old-fashioned just plain black with the moon man on the bottom. We've got the uh, sky blue with the moon man on the back pocket. And everybody's personal, my personal favorite, everybody's favorite here, the rainbow slash yeah. like, what's that called? Like ombre or whatever. Uh, with a little, I'm gonna call it like Sherbert. No, call it ombre. I like ombre, that. you like that? Yeah. Ah, this with, ombre. With the moon, with the moon man right there on the on the bottom right leg. Now the the uh, rainbow and the blue are uh, five inch inseams, and this the black is the seven uh, six inch inseam. I, we put the netting in the blue and the rainbow on the ombre because I you learned cock. that yeah, you, you, when you have longer shorts, you're wearing board shorts back in the day, you don't have to worry about your dick and balls. This new trend with five inch inseams, like you squat down or something. 
your, your frank and beans are coming out. So <laughs> Mostly you gotta, beans, but yeah. <laughs> a lot of beans. If you're a long ball guy, it's the beans. Uh, but Me and but Johnny also, Knox. <laughs> you can you can cut out the net. I gave you the choice. You know, you can always remove a net. You can't put a net back in if your balls if you got long balls. Yeah. And uh, also, and this is maybe a long ball situation. I appreciate the support. Oh, I I, I do too. But the netting is not the the most. I, I, you need an, another material in there. I feel like. No, I like the net. You like the net? Yeah, like a nice uh, little fucking breezy. Net, and it gives you like the oh. like you know like digs you know you get like the waffle, ah. you know the imprints on your skin yeah, from the net. My netting. thick skin's weird enough. Ah. <laughs> everyone's ball skin's weird. What are you talking about? Everyone's coming around here like you have fucking pristine ball skin. You got weird ball skin. <laughs> Bolskin sounds like the last name of like someone from like Bratislava, <laughs> Mr. Bolskin. I am the I am the Russian premier. I'm Vladimir everyone, Bolskin. Everyone in the room seen a pair of balls. Terrible. They're weird skinned. They're the worst. <laughs> it's a weird skin. What, you, what do you think's weirder, the balls or the vagina? Oh, the vagina for sure is the weirder thing. Like we're just talking about in, in general. What's weird? Yeah. Vagina. You kidding me? By the way, I, you got one in your throat. What? You, you have one in your throat. A vagina in my oh, throat? Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, like you. when you look down at with the camera? Kevin. It looks exactly like a pussy. It is. I was opening it and closing it. I was, when I was going, hee, get me, me go, hee, and I was thinking, and I was, I'd see it open and close, and I was like, oh, it's, it's that's a, a pussy. That's just a pussy. <laughs> like, Doc, let's call it what it is. That's a pussy. <laughs> I think we got to the root of the problem here. I have reproductive organs in my throat. <laughs> I might be pregnant. <laughs> I ate so much pussy, my throat turned into one, Doc. That's how not. That's how many dicks I'm not sucking. Yeah. So much pussy, I have one. I was just so confused. I was like, you not see what I'm doing? It's a pussy. <laughs> hey, well, have you ever seen the TikTok, by the way, of the, the cup with no lid? No. I don't know if it's like famously TikTok, uh, famously TikTok viral or not. I, I saw, only see TikToks when they make it to Twitter. Well, I so I, I saw it in one of my uh, like meme accounts that I follow uh, on. Yeah, give me some of those. I don't, I don't on, know how to follow uh, meme accounts. I got. I, don't, I, don't, I, I know I, how to follow. Them. I, I have all know. these stupid meme accounts that I follow, and then I'll see something, and I don't know which one it is. You know what I mean? I'm like, fuck, which is it? But oh, I gotta find it. We'll put it in. Uh, it's 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 like this this like. Uh, this technologically advanced coffee cup that doesn't need a lid because when you twist it, it like spirals shut and spirals yeah, yeah, open. Yeah, I've seen that. It looks like a bottle. And so the guy, he's like, is twisting it, and, and this guy's like, I'm going to fuck that cup. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everybody in the world saw that cup and thought about fucking it immediately. Uh, Anyway, uh, buy the shorts. I don't yeah. know how we got there. But, uh, but uh, what I was going to say was, so uh, I, I, I started to feel better mostly yesterday, but a little bit Saturday. So I was like, getting some fresh air. We're going for walks. Mm -hmm. Not the weekend to do it. No. Um, oh, and But terrible. one, because of heat. Two, lots of people. I, 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 I walked through. I walked well, through. Well, brother, I mean, pride is, is out of control. Well, that's, this is what I mean. Yeah, okay. So I, I walked through. First of all, I, I didn't. I didn't go. I didn't check the Twitter. Oh boy, uh, that's an old statement. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say the, the Twitter emails. Something. They're just emails. Yeah. Um, I didn't check the Twitter. The uh, but I, I just uh, yeah I knew it was Pride Month. I didn't know it was this weekend. It was the it was finale. Like, yeah. yeah. So they went hard. Um, and so I, I just walked out in athletic shorts, Birkenstocks with no socks, and a barstool T-shirt. Oh God. I had parades going down both sides, both yeah. avenues by my apartment, and so the first one. Just walking through it, I committed about four hate crimes. <laughs> it was just reading the signs. <laughs> like I, I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, I can't like, even see these things. Dude, one said N-word trans dykes, which I'm not sure is a word I can say. <laughs> said it pretty harshly, in fact. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, N-word trans dykes are still being fucking murdered. And I was like, that's awful. Jesus. I don't know what to do about that. That sucks. And then and I, and I made eye contact with the person with the sign. And gave him the ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just panicked. I was like, nice to see it. Because so, I was just like, it wasn't like this. I don't know about the other parades, but this one wasn't like, they weren't like the bike racks. Like, I could just walk, just yeah, cross through yeah, the yeah, parade. Yeah. Right, right, right. And, and it was just like, all of them were like, oh, I can't say that. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. Like, I couldn't possibly say that. So I just had like my head down like, oh, boy, well, this you're, is awkward. You're lucky you didn't get like rocks thrown at you. Like, <laughs> there's a straight white male walking through here. Straight white male. I was, and then like, and then you get covered with the fucking. I was like, well, I can't abandon my people now. So I'm like walking like three blocks. Like, Hello, all right, we here, we go, here, here we go, here we go, here we go. Just like here. that was enough time, I think. I can't, I can't get out of here now. And then, so then I fucking go back, and I'm going back towards Eighth Avenue, 
where it was the uh, I think that was I think th this one was pretty trans heavy. The one yeah. on seventh or sixth, whatever it was, and then eighth was pride heavy. And there's a lot it, going on. A, yeah, because because then also the the, the Derek Chauvin ver uh, verdict or uh, sentencing came down, so there was Black Lives Matter going on, and oh. then there was also a Palestinian thing going on. So there was like heavens. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know the, the gays, other two. The Palestinians, the black people. It was like oh, and as a white person, it was like get the fuck out of here. You are white. <laughs> and I was an ally. I walked for three blocks. I'm so sick of the ally talk. I'm so sick of the ally. Normalize being an ally, Kevin. I, 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 I heard. I heard a story. This girl went to a party this weekend. She a a song came on. Uh, it was by Harry Styles, and she didn't ally. know it, and was like, she was like, uh, wait, who, who is? Is this Justin Bieber? And they go. You're not an ally. <laughs> I love she it. had to like leave the That's party. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but, the fucking ally um, talk is madness. But but we got so many allies now that <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying ally. I love it. I, I, um, it. All right, fine. You can be the axe is evil. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, the so I'm walking towards eighth, and there's a guy behind me. Probably I don't know. We'll call him middle aged gentleman, and he just goes. Say no to homosexual. Like he just didn't have it in him anymore. Like this guy's been fighting <laughs> like, the he fight. Lo he lost. Like he said it yeah. so quietly. Like he's yeah. like he, he was just like say no to homosexuality. <laughs> just to like, himself. Like like to, he's like, still just like, trying like, to convince himself. He, he would have gotten more fucking attention for it if he said it while he was drowning himself in his sink. <laughs> like 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 I was like bro. I like who was this for? You like, lost. It was you like, lost. Like like yeah. it, he was like that fucking the the Japanese soldier on, in the Philippines <laughs> who like was there for like forty years like still fighting the war. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like nobody, bro, nobody cares. It is. It's over. over. It's you lost. You Good day, sir. Need. Yeah. I, I, I got to tip my cap to people still fighting. Yeah. You know, oh, the, still the bigots <laughs> who are still fighting against progress. Hats off to that, I mean, Mr. Like, Ally. Just to fucking really. Yeah. Like, like, you, got, you have. Look, look, look. Dude, this like, is they're a in a foxhole weekend. by themselves. And they're still fucking firing. This is a <laughs> tough weekend, man. <laughs> like, this is like you are going down with the ship see, if you're still this, out there preaching the word of God see, and the Bible this guy, This guy didn't have any God stuff on him. He, he was I, just, I think yeah. he just hated gay people. I think this was just strictly a personal thing. Bro, it, wasn't, they, it wasn't between him, God, and the gays. This was just him and the gays. This is a one on one fight. <laughs> he was not doing well. No, it's, I mean, <laughs> it was, this. Pride, pride is in New York City. Is uh, I mean, you, yeah, you've lost. Yeah. If you are still against homosexuality, you take a look at this and you pack it up and be like, ah, right, they've won. Yeah, there, this is their victory lap. Every June and the end of June, it is out of control. I mean, there's just dicks and balls and assholes out galore, bro. It's it's just crazy. It was it was awful, awful. Being a straight white man yesterday, as I walked through these things, I'm surprised like, you didn't just. Like, oh, I'm surprised you just didn't come out right then. Nice There's fucking. Like, I could see you being like, if you can't beat him, no, they wouldn't have let me. Yeah. <laughs> like, that yeah. is true. No thanks, dude. In the fucking Birkenstock and Barstool, Barstool shirt, shirt. Yeah. and a fucking Eastern I'm, Connecticut again, rugby shorts. You legit, don't even know where those came from. I'm surprised <laughs> you did not get hate crimes reversed, <laughs> like a reverse hate crime. Straight white man just beaten to death at the pride parade. And they bro, take a look at him. They go, oh, okay, bro. Okay. If I pop my top off, it was like I'm gay too. They're like, no, you're. Go He's going through a phase. <laughs> <laughs> At best, he's curious. Yeah. At best, he's on the Kinsey scale, like somewhere. No, no, we don't blame you. I heard you eat so much pussy, you got one in your throat. You are not fucking gay, sir. Dude, gay guys are all they so insane. They using all the, all the excuses they use on kids who are gay. <laughs> It's just, he's just confused at the moment. Put your shirt on. Go fucking watch Criminal Minds and chill out, you hetero pussy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, it's good though. They they can have it, and I'll stay inside in the air conditioning. I gotta get mine fixed. Just been too lazy. You you haven't had air conditioning for months? Nope. <laughs> what have you been doing? Sleeping on the couch. Uh, but you have air conditioning there. Yeah, not very good though. Oh my god, I've been hot. You see yeah, what's going on hot. in the Pacific Northwest? <laughs> That's what I've what been doing. I've been being hot. The, the, the heat dome. <laughs> what? It's, it's just exactly what it sounds like. It's like a there's a air pressure system that's just creating a dome over like all of like uh, Oregon and Washington and shit, and it's just trapping in the heat. And that they're used to shit that's like so moderate. There's a lot of places that just don't even have air conditioning, which is preposterous. I feel like unless you live in like the Arctic, you need to make sure you have the air conditioning. 
and they're just like so so it's gonna hit like 120 it's like blowing all their temperature records out of the water it's like 107 every day and these are places that just don't even have air conditioning. i bet i bet the pacific northwest gets humid as a bitch too absolutely. Right? it's all wet and shit Ugh. oh i would absolutely kill myself before living there i would just i would leave for like the the next two weeks be gone yeah it's like how i'll never get killed by a tornado i'll never get caught in a heat dome never if there's a dome i'm gone <laughs> this is doming gone bad yeah. this is doming the bad side of doming <laughs> Uh, well, my my um, my t my time spent while you were dying was kind of the polar opposite. I'm jet setting around the country, going to fucking basketball yeah. games. I was uh, I was lucky enough to share a, a plane and, and a suite with the newest celebrity on the internet, Dana Beers. No, I would tell you right now if I stole your fucking dumb socks, dude. I went to. I'm genuinely telling you, I did not steal your fucking socks. Who is, who is also racking it up on Cameo, bro. He's going to make more money than all of us doing Cameo. Uh, Cameo is the best way to, to kind of brighten up somebody's day. Uh, how many times, you know, we just went through it with Father's Day, and that, that's where I, I put it out there saying, you don't know what to get your dad. You're going to get him some, th something shitty. Just spend a few bucks on a Cameo and get him a personalized message from his favorite actor, athlete, hero, who, whatever. I, can't, I cannot tell you how much my dad loved and I think he thinks like almost like Seinfeld's dad, where he's like it fell off a truck. Like I think yeah, he thinks, he thinks I like just like I knew like, John Hanna, yes. so I got the video. That's the thing. If you get it for like older people or people who aren't on the on the internet as much, they don't understand what's going on. They just think that somehow, some way, you put in a call, put in a favor, and you've got their the biggest actor in the world is giving them a shout out. It's 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 just a nice like a little like slice of uh, you know. It's like. Um, like I, I did one the other day for uh, I did a bunch hyping up a bachelor party where they, we just want like we just want to play this for like the beginning of the bachelor party being like let's fucking go mm -hmm. or these guys who do like a golf uh, invitational every year they they do a beer Olympics they, and it's just like it's a little added something that you can get from uh, you know people in sports people in entertainment I mean Dana Beers is doing them now it's like you want a video of Dana chugging you just you can pay him a few bucks and you can send it on to your friends be like look at Dana Beers when he went up on the Jumbotron man that was a cameo place went wild so you can basically go get uh, that personalized wherever you want you can book it with me you can get it with uh, Snoop Floyd Mayweather David Hasselhoff Tony Hawk uh, Ice Cube I mean there's a bunch of names but really just me just go get me uh, you can book me now I go I go hard I'll give you your money's worth uh, so go to cameo.com to request a personalized video from whatever star you want uh, but again, make it me. Go to go to mine. Go to cameo.com. Go to KFC Barstool. Uh, <laughs> I was I was with the celebrity Dana Beers. So Penn had this uh, had this event where they had Penn National had all their like high roller gamblers. So all like the biggest winners and biggest players on the sports book, combined with a few others that just won like a random contest. So like, if you placed a bet in this one uh, pool of theirs, then you could be randomly selected. So it was like our high rollers mixed with some of our just regular betters, and uh, and then they wanted to hang out with some Barstool people and watch the Bucks. Originally, the entire world thought, all right, this will be in Philly or Brooklyn, and that didn't work out. So they're like, all right, I guess we got to go to Milwaukee. And Penn has this baller private jet. That's not like one of these like rinky dink puddle jumpers. It's like a fucking. Which is that? Those are the only kinds I've taken. Those I don't. And, and those scare me. To be champagne honest. problems, of course. But sure, like, but that does like when they're when you walk on and they're, they have to distribute the weight when they're like, all right, fat guys over here, skinny <laughs> people over there. That kind of scares me. Uh, Bro, I've been so hungover, just tangled with gas and shit, because like they're like all the seats are facing each other. Yeah, you're like, like knee to yeah, knee. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was like, this I, was, I was just taking Southwest guys. Honestly, it's kind of <laughs> the same shit, right? This was like a couch. Two couches, three or four like individual leather chairs. They fully stocked it. They went all out. It's once you fly private like that, you can't go back. You just you can't go back. And so we fly into Milwaukee. The walking walking onto the plane. So that's really what I learned from this whole experience between Penn hooking it up with the plane and then the suite. We walk on the tarmac. We just walk right up. We could have brought. All the Colombian blow we wanted. <laughs> uh, it's like, oh, I now I understand how they smuggle things. They just buy one of these planes. I always wonder, like, how do you get past this? Oh, it just doesn't matter. Do it this way. Uh, so there's your drugs, and there, and and you have no, you know, you know, worry about your belt and your laptop and your shoes, like none of that unsophisticated bullshit. You just walk right up. Anytime you also walking up a flight of stairs into a plane instead of one of those hallway things, you feel like a fucking. Bro, I feel like that when I fly a Delta and they make me walk across the runway. What? When they, like sometimes when you fly up like on like a regular flight, and do they? Go, oh yeah, like, on like it's like the shuttle maybe. Uh, I feel I'm like on, when I fly on like a major plane, it's usually those you know like the the. 
I that, guess that, maybe, that I guess like, hallway probably thing that connects to like yeah, the, the, for the sure, gate, but you know? You've never like walked out onto the runway? I don't think oh, so. I, def- I have like numerous times. People here, right? Yeah. No. On a regular no? flight? Do you? What? Just like walked out like on the runway kind of deal? Rather, like, you know, from the airport, you're at your gate and then you walk like. Perfect. Yeah. There's yeah, like, I, it's, I, I don't know. Like, I feel what, like I'm, I'm the president. I feel like I'm getting on Air Force One. Yeah, when I, walk I, I feel like I, I feel like I'm like very big. Th- and I'm, just, was, and I'm going to squeeze into my seat. Like, this was Teeterboro and had like a hangar too. And you see like a full size fucking hangar with multiple planes in it and shit. I'm like, this feels like Air, Area 51 or some <laughs> shit. So between that, just hopping on there. And then when we get to when we got to Milwaukee, they were awesome. The the Fiserv Center, whatever it is, they were like right this way. We went like into the basement and like the, the depths of the fucking place and then up to our suite. No security or waiting or tickets there it was like that's that's my new you know like if i had a superpower or if i would would i rather have you know xyz dollars or just never have to wait for anything again the no waiting on the plane and the suite was just unreal uh and then we watched the bucks beat the shit out of the hawks and the buck people in milwaukee are like loving it i mean this is like what they've this is the moment for them this is their team those games in particular are sick like a playoff game with a blowout is you know, Brooke Lopez hitting threes, the place is going bananas, the, just running up the score, having a blast. I've obviously been fortunate enough to be to go to many playoff games in my life. And there have been so. seen some sick like overtime wins and close wins and shit like that. Twenty eight to three 20, comeback. Twenty eight three is a pretty good one. Um but like two of my best games I've ever been to were game three of the Stanley Cup Finals in two thousand eleven. The Bruins won six one, maybe mm-hmm. something like that. I forget. Just a beat down. And it was just an absolute beat down. And then Pat's the deflate gate game. The Colts game where we beat the shit out of yeah, the Colts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when they did that ridiculous trick play, right? Uh, I don't even remember. I don't know. I got I was fucked up. Like, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. I don't remember. But it was like, it was just like one of those things where, like, in the first quarter, like, this game's over. Let's just yeah. drink and fuck and, and, and then, I mean, and you're and making a mockery. They keep, they keep, they keep the pouring other. it on. It's like, ah! Like, you're just, playing with confidence. Mm-hmm. You're not even tired. They're not putting up a fight. Mm-hmm. So you're just like, this is a blast. Uh, and Dana, so they, 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 uh, I can't even believe this, and I'm happy for him, but at the same time, uh, I, I'm just like, what? When when they found out that Dana Beers was coming, the the Bucks and the NBA called up Penn and were like, we heard Dana's coming. Shut up, really? <laughs> like, insane. Bro, how long? much longer is he going to have a different job than just being the beer guy? So I'll tell you but about it in a second. He still does. Like, I had a conversation. I know, I know. <laughs> the, so we arrive in Milwaukee. Uh, they present him with a customized Bucks jersey with his name on the back. 69 and whatever Dana's fucking Bacaca Katari, whatever his fucking name is. Bacaca, I don't even, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Bacaca. so then they tell him that... Uh, they're gonna put him on the jumbotron, and and he's like, "This is my moment." They thought that uh, I, I, I keep forgetting this guy's name, the Packers offensive lineman who's at all the games yeah. and shows. I mean, we're, we're we're getting close enough. It's yeah. David McCarthy, McCarthy. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he uh, he um, he's like nervous as fuck now because he's like, "This is my my fucking moment," you know. And we're like, "What are you gonna do? How long do I have? When's it gonna be?" And they they kind of gave him like a, a, a like it's gonna be in the first half, and then they're like, "It'll be roughly around then." And you can see like dude was like like nervous, <laughs> like what am I gonna do? When's it gonna happen? I told him I said it was like being at a being like a best man at a wedding where you just gotta get to the speech and then you can have fun. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> so this is like his speech, his moment, and uh, they put up Cheryl Crow on the thing. They put up Chance the Rapper on there. Uh, Donald Driver got like a real like pop like big big one, but then they're like please welcome Barstool Sports and they put like all of us on it. But then they like zoom in to Dana and they put Dana beers up and he stands up and he points to the back. The crowd goes wild. He chugs one beer, chugs a second beer, and then Casey stands up and pours a Tall Boy Miller yeah. Light and he's yugging it. And then he takes it, hits his head, he spikes it. Now there is beer going everywhere, and. You know, if it was in Brooklyn, I could see some, like, hipster Brooklyn assholes being like, oh, oh, like, get off of me. You know, this isn't even an IPA. <laughs> and if it was in Philly, who knows? We got people fucking, you know, pull out a knife to shank you. The people in Milwaukee were, like, happy to have Dana Beers spor- spill Miller Lite all over. <laughs> it was like, thank you, thank you, like, waving up to the suite. It was unbelievable. The amount of guys who were just like, Dana Beers! I mean, he's a full-blown fucking beer-drinking celebrity. And I said to him, like, 
you know, he was talking about like he's got to like get home and or or he's talking about he's got to go back down to Mississippi for like a couple months. And I was like, fuck, man, like, is that what you want to do? And he's kind of like, well, I got I got to do make my other job. And I'm like, do you really? I mean, this is like big. He's got like two hundred thousand followers now. Like, the fucking bucks know you're coming. Like, this is a big deal. You've got you've got you know, zillion beers. You've got some shit here. And he was just like. I can't, how much longer can I keep doing this? <laughs> like, he's so 28 years old, he's gonna kill me. <laughs> so he does understand, yeah. like, while he's chosen, like, to monetize and and celebrityize drinking beer, that also comes at a at a cost of like, I have to drink beer non fucking stop. <laughs> but if there's one guy who can do it, it's him. I mean, yeah. it's impressive. He throws him back. So, uh, uh, and then the dude, uh, the Packers guy, DM'd him and said, "If we make it to the finals, you're coming with me." So, uh, is that? But like, what if it's game five? Uh, I mean, I, I he said finals, so I don't know. If He's he, a finals, yeah. Uh, now, once Dana did the beer tweet, the Bucks went on like a forty to thirteen <laughs> run. So if I'm the Bucks, I'd be flying him back in, like you know, right away. But uh, I also didn't realize that this was. I, I saw the video of the celebrities. I don't know why I put it, they're, they're all celebrities uh, of the celebrities at the Milwaukee game, but I didn't realize that. It went from that into no. I, it didn't do it like right oh, away, okay, but it was okay, like okay. They, they were doing it like at this commercial break and then this commercial I break. See, I see, I and see, then Barstool, okay. but Dana got his own one there, and uh, and it was so. Then we come back, we leave it like the fourth quarter, fly back. Um, oh man, so back to back moments on the way home. That so uh, Penn has uh, this girl who's awesome who like runs kind of their events and is kind of like hospitality coordinator and she's kind of like your liaison almost mm -hmm. to, like bring you around and show you the plane and take us to the game and all that beautiful chick she's a rocket she's fun she's a party girl she like knows her shit so um, we're on the plane and she's like pouring out tequila shots and getting everybody drinks and and I'm obviously over the hill, so I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm just, like, sipping a beer, having some wine, nothing crazy. They're pouring out. They have this tequila bottle that has, like, the top is, like, a bell. And you can, like, hit. What is it? Azul. Azul, yeah. You hit oh, it. the it's blue like, and white ding. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone's, like, hitting the bell and all this shit. And I'm kind of like, ah, you know, I'm, just, I'm very low-key. And so then uh, on the way there, and then, you know, we get, we're getting more friendly. Everyone's talking. On the way back, she's, like, like, come on, like, why aren't you partying? And I'm sitting there, and at this point, everyone's pretty tired and drunk, and I'm like, I have, I probably have fucking kids who are closer to your age than you are to me. <laughs> and I was joking, and she was like, no, you fucking don't. And I was like, how old are you? And she was like, I'm 21. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and so I do the math, and she literally does. She literally <laughs> is closer to Shay than I am Really? To no. How old are you? Shay's turning six. She's 21, I'm 36. It's like 15 and 16 years. <laughs> I was like, holy fucking shit. I hope the plane crashes right now. I mean, that is a harrowing moment. That was like, oh, I, I really didn't mean it at first. And then I was like, because I thought she was like, you'd be, you be self defecating. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. But she was surprised. So I was like, okay. You know what I mean? She wasn't like, oh, yeah, you fucking old deadbeat, you know? <laughs> so I at least have that going for me. So that was already a moment of, like, kind of, like, dejection. Then we get back to Teterboro, and we're uh, – we um – Shout out to Spider, who I guess always make sure that there's Ubers waiting when you get off the plane. We forgot about that, so we got to get an Uber, and it's got to come all the way to this, like, private terminal. So it's, you know, life's tough. We had to wait 15 minutes for the Uber. So we're sitting there. It's, like, 2 in the morning. Like I said, everyone's pretty tired and drunk. And a couple other planes who did just did the same thing in Milwaukee land in, in Teterboro and come back, come through the same terminal. And this one guy is like, hey, are you guys Bucks fans? Because Dana and Marty had bought some gear. And they're like, uh, tonight we were not really. It was just a thing. And he's like, oh, all right. Well, like, did you go to the game? And he's like, you're like, yeah. And he said, like, who brought you there? We're like, what do you mean, dude? Like, we brought ourselves there. He's like, what company? And I was like, well, it's Barstool, but it's Penn. And in my mind, I'm like, anybody who's here is probably an important person because mm -hmm. they're on flying private. And but whatever, I'm beat at this point. Mad that the Ubers aren't there. And he's like, we're like, it's Barstool, but we have this company with Penn, and they're the, they're the ones on the plane. It's just a thing, man, you know? <laughs> People aren't even, like, making eye contact with this guy. And he goes, all right, well, I own the team, so thanks for the support, guys. <laughs> and I was like, fuck! <laughs> fuck! Just, like, the greatest, most subtle flex. Well, I own the franchise that you just, like, flew to watch. Uh, and then immediately like, I kick into gear and I'm like, 
he's like uh, we're like oh my god wow that's amazing like we love the you know they blew him out tonight and he's like what you know what were you guys doing so i showed him the the dana jumbotron video and he like got a kick out of it he loved it and he's like all right like have a, have a good one guys like see you later you fucking dumb assholes <laughs> yeah. and he goes great and, networking boys <laughs> yeah like total i didn't get a picture didn't didn't get it you know shake a hand and remind him he were barcelona sports and <laughs> mark lassery 1.8 billion dollar net worth <laughs> fucking billionaire primary owner there's like three guys who own the bucks but i think he's like the head honcho and I'm sitting there like, I'm tired. Yeah. Bro, can you sleep? Well, can't you see? I'm dejected at this moment. <laughs> like, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. I just I'm met, old. I just met this girl who's fucking like daughter's age. <laughs> Pouring shots. Like, just leave me alone for a minute, please. <laughs> it was something, man. It was it was something. Uh, but I will say this about Dana, Dana Beers. Um just today, I'm walking by the Yak radio room, oh, yes. and they pull me in, and they ask me if I've ever butt chugged. <laughs> and I was like, no. Dana Beers just casually dropped that twice he's butt chugged. <laughs> and he was like, it's college, dude. <laughs> you butt chugged? You butt Get chugged. Get the fuck out of here. I don't even know if we can talk about this without <laughs> yeah. it being some sort of harassment. <laughs> yeah. I thought Jackie's you knew this. Butt chugged? I thought you knew this. No. She dropped this subtly once, and I was like, did nobody react to that? <laughs> I also don't know if we can talk about <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, let's leave the room. Jackie, you tell the story. <laughs> you put a funnel in your ass and drank out of it? Get on the mic, girl. I'm going to look over though. here while you do it, but get on the mic. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm going to look you dead in the eye yeah. while it happens. <laughs> Which this might be making it weirder. I don't I care. Don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. I basically... And I didn't even, like, use the funnel. I mean, like, you guys are making it no, so you much... You definitely didn't use the funnel right. You I know that. You are making it so much more awkward. Yeah. All right, Jackie, tell okay, us Okay, actually, story. no, you know what? Keep it. <laughs> basically, that lasted half a second. <laughs> basically, I, so I didn't even use a funnel, so I don't even know if I could, like, say it was. What, is, what do you mean? You didn't use a funnel? I can't. I can't no, I know, a, I know. Just a <laughs> That's why I don't even, like, know if I could say that I did, but basically, my, like, we just flipped me upside down. <laughs> And my friends. Who's the we? <laughs> okay. okay. And my friends and I. Okay. Because we were curious about it because, like, it gets the job done faster. That's and I was what they say. really hungover. And I was like, I can't, like, put Shut this up. in my stomach <laughs> right now. Next time, next time this happens, give me a call, I'll get you an IV. Okay? No, I was just. I just I was, drink. I was hungover. I got a bottle of beer up my ass. Yeah, but it's called being a trooper. <laughs> Most people and smoke a joint. I don't know. There's a million other ways. Okay. So you're a trooper. Are you, are you, you're you're, you're, you're on your back. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, I'm on, I'm like on my hands. Okay. And like my friends are holding. Jeez. Okay, I see, I see. <laughs> wait, you're yeah. like, 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 uh, like, wait, I didn't see what she was doing. What? Yeah, like, you're <laughs> doing like, 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 splayed like, out, like, like, like a splayed um, man, but. Like a, like a, like a, a, a fucking flayed? flayed man, flayed man. What, what am I trying to say? A cake stand? Like, uh, yeah, like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And, I can't even talk. And, <laughs> and then it was just like a bottle cap size of tequila. Oh, you oh, did a shot in your ass. It was a shot. Took a you shot. did a shot with your asshole. Holy and, shit. Yeah. And then there was another time. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if this is like, this is like, if this is, was just in my head, but one time at Coachella, we were like, I was trying, to, like, I was like the mule, like the smuggler. <laughs> yeah, mule. you were, apparently. <laughs> so, apparently. No, no. And so, Back no, in no, that no, thing. No, no, no. Before, like, I wasn't, it wasn't like, like like keeping anywhere but i was just like i stuffed like our tequila like in my skirt mm -hmm. and that again sorry <laughs> and then but then it leaked and then i don't know what happened but somehow you i got wasted? like 20 times stronger than i should have <laughs> so i think i like that one sounds like a roofie yeah. <laughs> like, like, I, like i sat in tequila once next thing i knew i was drunk <laughs> anyway, story. wow wow <laughs> which of your which of your we're gonna put it on podcast check you know what we're gonna do <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, and, mm. and 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 one of your friends was just the chosen one to like like put it in there like they just so they just poured it in but there, was there was there like a tube you guys still are making eye contact <laughs> I don't yeah. think I'll ever make eye contact ever again, again. Yeah. <laughs> ever again um they just call HR that just was check a, on some things yeah, yeah. It was did you, you like, so you didn't use a, t uh, uh, a funnel, I didn't use a funnel but so did you was, use like a tube it was like hard to aim and like but we just like so you like, just 
poured tequila yeah. in your asshole? Yeah, it was like sticky. <laughs> <laughs> but like a lot of it missed. Mike is hiding. <laughs> Mike is hiding. The new guy. The oh new guy. Like, I meant like my. Uh, back. I don't know what to I do meant with this like my back right now. I meant like my back was sticky because they like met. I'm just gonna like stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you you yeah you didn't really you didn't butt funnel. I, I don't you didn't butt. Jackie, I don't know if you, you ever have. It just sounds like someone <laughs> poured tequila on your butt. Yeah. I definitely did got, it get like, in there? Drunker. Yeah, I did. <laughs> but like it wasn't like next time we were like next time we're gonna funnel it. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a next time? No. Yeah. I'll wow. Keep you guys updated. I day. feel like they did an airplane now. Like picked a bad week to stop drinking. <laughs> 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 Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> wow. John, are you allowed to butt chug right now? Or? I've, I've never butt chug. I've done cocainus, but I've never done butt chug. Cocainus? <laughs> You've done that? Yeah. How do you do that? Straw? You just, you just, you just put it, your finger in your, oh, finger okay. up your butt. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a guys. real real fucking rocket shot. <laughs> Get you going. What, what I think is crazy about the beer, like that makes more sense. The tequila. Mm. Yeah, beer is too beer, much liquid in your ass. It's like, you know, if you do a 12 ounce, 24 ounce, 36 ounce beer. How do you drink it? I've seen Steve O do when, it. When, Steve O's the only one I've ever really like, witnessed. Because when, when you funnel regular beer, uh, when you funnel with your mouth, <laughs> like you can pour, what? I think people put like three beers in there usually, right? Aren't the funnels like pretty? Well, I, the ones I've done were like big. I mean, you can do Because I, I remember I, I being usually like, do just one. Just one, yeah. I mean, the one I did was like big. And I remember being like worried about it, but it just, <laughs> like it just, you know, it just goes down your fucking gullet. And I feel like it goes up your fucking ass. <laughs> yeah. But does but it like, like, it I all can, like come back out? Yeah, like I feel, look, I've seen things. Is this just a beer enema? Yeah, I've seen people put things in their butt. They just kind of push it out. Yeah, <laughs> like 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 milk and stuff, <laughs> <laughs> rubber duckies, fucking strawberries. I'm talking, I'm talking strictly liquid. I've seen liquids yeah. in butts. And they come, they out. come out pretty fast. Yeah, <laughs> and not enough time to get drunk in there. I don't know. I guess you gotta yeah. ask fucking Dana Beers. <laughs> Dana Butt. Dude, Dana <laughs> Beers and the B stands for beers in my butthole. <laughs> that's Fuck. like when I when I got like uh when I had E. coli and they put like a pill up my ass. Yeah, the suppository. And they were like, like you gotta keep this in. And I was like, all right. And I like right I clenched my cheeks. I made it like halfway down the hallway. I was like, I'm going to shit. <laughs> and I feel like I do the same thing with a fucking twelve ounce beer in my ass. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get this out of me, guys. <laughs> like, cool. The moment's over. Yeah. We had our fun. I'm gonna go like, shit. I can't the beer. fucking drink it. Like, Dude, I can't put uh, it in my stomach. Like, there's no way. There's no way to just leave beer in your ass and then piss it out, right? No. I mean, I, I don't know if a great understanding of the medical body. I just no. learned as a pussy there, in the throat. There, so. there is no. <laughs> there is no pathway. From the colon to the bladder, right? That just doesn't exist. I, I don't think so. You'd but have to travel all the way up and around. The back. Yeah, I mean, it's just not happen. It's like a Hot Wheels racetrack. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like the, the screen machine, the loops that you have to do to get in there. It's just not working. Man, what what a moment we just had! <laughs> Holy moly! <laughs> I am. Just I am. I have. Very few times in my life been rendered speechless, <laughs> and I don't know where to go from here. So we're gonna talk about Shady Rays, <laughs> the glasses that I just got two pairs. Uh, I got the, um, they're both blue. They're both like the one. I always mix up frames and lenses. One lens, you know, where it like connects through the nose, yeah, yeah the bridge yeah. of the nose. So one blue f lens, and I got like black. Uh, frames and then like clear frames. Do you think that that's too much for me? Clear frames? That and but more the the one blue. lens. Oh, it's one blue lens. You know what I mean? Like where like it doesn't have plastic in the bridge. It's like uh, the whole lens goes through. I, they, I'd have to see it. It's yeah, I think it's too much for a guy who's got you know. I think that, that the plus same age. the clear lens. Yeah, the clear I probably won't wear. The black was. Oh, they're wear. separate. They're separate. I yeah, I got so it. so you get two pairs. You use promo code KFC and then uh, it's buy one get one. So I just got two for the price of one. Um, and, you know, it's like I got kids who are, you know, closer to the age of the 21-year-olds than I am. I don't know what I can pull off anymore. I like the blue, the blue lenses. I'm, I'm fine with the color. It was more the one lens that I don't know if I can pull off. But they're fucking dope. For If I was younger, I would for sure be rocking them. No, no questions asked. But they've got all sorts of styles, all sorts of uh, different colors, different frames, different lenses that are all um, – Oh, you know what I like too is they, they give you the option. They just come in a little pouch uh, or you can pay for, the, uh, for a, a case. 
And it's like, I don't really need the case. You know what I mean? Yeah, like sometimes yeah, yeah. I'm paying for like a really high quality case. I'm like, I don't need that. So uh, you can pick and choose whether you want the case or the pouch. You get you the buy one, get one with the KFC promo. Uh, and they've got all sorts of cool shit that's like, they've got the classics. They've got ones that are a little more, uh, you know, a little more stylish, a little more cocky. You know, if you're out there to party, if you're trying to make a statement. So, uh, and the best part is when you hit that KFC promo, and it just like the whole price radically changes, and all of a sudden, you know, I I put it in, and I, I it was like I feel like you pulled off a heist. It I mean, it was like a hundred. Oh, I got these suckers. It was something like hundred and fourteen bucks, and then I hit KFC, and it was like broop fifty two dollars, and I was like, bam! <laughs> Feels like I'm robbing you. Uh, they started just forty eight bucks, and they are also doing a good deed with fighting hunger across America. So every time you don't you buy uh, glasses, they donate meals to the to the uh, to the need. Uh, so go to shadyrays.com. Use promo code KFC, and when you get two pairs or more, you get the buy one get one. So that's two pairs of sunglasses for just forty eight bucks. You can get those that 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 style I was talking about, or browse all the other selections. It's shadyrays.com. Promo code KFC for buy one get one. All right, top five today is uh, in honor of Pussy Throat over here. We're gonna do the top five worst things about being sick, primarily more in the hospital. But last uh, week we brought you best things about being sick. That was before we knew that John was like really fucking <laughs> oddly bizarrely sick. Um, and then maybe next week we'll do um, top five best things about putting liquids in your asshole. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, top fives today. Worst things about being in the uh, – being second in the hospital. I'll let you go first because you just experienced it. But Attention. You don't like the attention. It is – I it, I think you had it on your top five at best. Well, sympathy is different than attention. Okay, sympathy. but I hear what you what, mean. Like, what, you whatever like word you it. want. I'm gonna do all five. It's gonna be all five. Yeah. I'll just use a different word for everyone. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll go with sympathy. Well, well, one. you don't. I, I that that totally makes sense. Like, I got a, I got a text from Casey being like, "Is John like really like sick, or is this like is this dramatic?" I'm watching these videos and like, and I was like, "I, I think he's fine." He told me he's fine. And she, she was like, "Okay, so like, I don't have to like go to the hospital to like." And I was like, "Oh, that's the last thing." John wants yeah. to do. If you showed up and now he's got to like host you yeah. and it's like his fault reason he's the reason why then he's gonna be furious yeah. John it, would rather die alone it was it is 100% like now don't get me wrong like I appreciate it, it was just non-stop it was like yeah. text from everyone the whole time yeah and like it, 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 I very much appreciate it I'm not trying to be like a dickhead no, like an old, old Scrooge but like, at some off, point like, it's like a, but when it gets to the point where people are like what are your symptoms I'm like, I don't know. What are your credentials? Like, what yeah, is it, why do I need what to tell you? What does it fucking matter what yeah. my symptoms are? You're going to help me out like, over the text right now, dude? Yeah. <laughs> like, I just, I just kept, I kept telling everyone I'm just being dramatic about a sore throat. And the, and it, what it was. Like, I mean, largely, that's basically, if the doctors should be believed. There seems to be nothing wrong with me. I mean, eventually, I was, you're going to be dead. Don't, don't, let's, let's not be, surprised. like, you're going to die of this. And we're going to be like, yeah, the doctor said it was on the wrong. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He told us he's it, just a sore throat. I was, it seems like I just was being dramatic about a sore throat. But it was like. Like well, what what do you say? I I had people just giving me like, like could it be this? I'm like I, I don't know. The doctors haven't brought that you up, just so I have been like, like, me right now. And like, like it's such a trope and shit like that. Yeah. Like I I like my mom was the same way. She's like, oh, I'm looking at these pictures right now. You don't want to see these. I'm like yeah, like, well, no. I was like, thanks. all right, how about don't even tell me about right, those. Right, right. How about that? It's worse. Dude, I had Liz Gonzalez. God bless her. I love her. Asked me if I might have Hiroshito's disease. I said I don't think so, Liz. I don't. They haven't tested for it yet. I don't know. What the fuck is Hiroshito's? <laughs> It was. I, I wrote it down because I was like, I was so like, wait, wait, what? I'm sorry. Hashimoto's disease. Hashimoto's is. <laughs> I, I, I've heard of Hashimoto's, but wait, Hashimoto's is, is is not like a giant fucking disgusting thing. I I had people crawling out of the woodwork to be like, look, I've been on the internet for ten minutes now, and I think you might have this. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like why won't you yeah. just let me fucking watch Seinfeld in peace? Yeah. I had to keep because you know, actually, shout out to Apple. You guys did kind of figure it out because back in the day. You had to, if you're watching, you're streaming, mm -hmm. you can't reply to a text, and then you got to get back onto it and you hit play again, and yeah. it starts with a commercial break. It's a whole fucking thing. Well, now it's got the little thing. Now you can do yeah, a little. It's so, great when you're watching porn, too. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. You're talking about, like, the little picture-in-picture picture almost on your phone? Yeah, you're banging like, chains while watching that? Yeah. yeah. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Sure. So you're fucking, what else are you doing? Like, when I'm fucking, when I'm watching porn, I'm... I'm pretty into the porn. I don't know. Someone's got to text me or whatever. It's like. Yeah, you just fucking dick in hand, firing it off. Just one hand. <laughs> one hand texting. I don't text one hand. I don't do it anymore. Well, I mean, I don't prefer to, but if my dick's in my other hand, then yeah, I got it. Yeah, but no, I just won't do it. I'll focus on the. On the, the dick or the hand. The milk the other. I'm watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Um, my number one, my number one pick uh, is gonna be just like uh, his is just your fucking butt hanging out of the back of those gowns. They're just so ridiculous. Wrong. They're so ridiculous. Oh my god, you're no. wrong. You like to walk around with your ass out like that? <laughs> I like. I don't like to walk around. But when I'm when I'm admitted and I have my own room. Oh yeah. No. Oh yeah. Why don't they just have robes that go on frontwards, the regular ways? You know. Why does your ass have to be out? Why do you put it like? Why do you put your sleeves in this way? Why? Why do they just? Decide you mean like to a muumu? Huh? Like, like a muumu, like over the top? No, just like a regular fucking robe. Why don't you just put it on like a jacket, like a robe, like a shirt, like everything other piece of clothing ever? Why do we have to have the butt out? I see what you're saying. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I can I get if you're like getting back surgery or ass or something from behind that you need open, but everything like that, Jesus. it's like just fucking <laughs> cover. Just have it be like regular. Yeah, no, you make it. And sense. then it's like you gotta like tie it off, and then if you do get up, it's just like here's my fucking white man ass out. <laughs> it's just so weird. <laughs> Couple that with the socks with the grippies, and it's just like oh, the socks with like the grippies. The, I like those, but it's just the whole Phenomenal. ensemble makes you like you're just this is like this little vulnerable piece of <laughs> shit. Like you're like all the other like the homeless people you're with. You know what I mean? It's like my butt's out. I don't have any shoes on. I don't. I don't know what I'm wearing. I just feel ridiculous right now. Why don't we just put on clothes like we always do? The <laughs> no. fucking gown. Ah, you're making sense. Yeah, making you're sense goddamn right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but nonetheless, I do like I like to let the ass breathe a little bit. <laughs> How often do you get to let your ass breathe? Yeah, I guess. Very so. rarely. Well, I, you, I don't well, let, you know what? You let I your don't ass let breathe at home. You don't let your ass breathe in public. I don't let it breathe at home. I saw a lot of ass breathing at the Pride. Yeah. <laughs> there was, there was not a suffocated butt to be seen during Pride. A <laughs> couple single tits out, too, which is just very rare. Tit. Yeah. Which is yeah. Like, yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Awards last yeah. night. Yep. Um, the, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, no, I, but I, I'm too ashamed of my body. Definitely. So to let my ass be because to, 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 so why do you like the gowns then? Well, we're out in public. Logically and speaking, Kevin, I have to be naked to let my ass breathe. Right. Unless you have a gown. Some on. genius invented a reverse gown, yeah. and I can just let that bad boy I go mean, you, without having to be repulsed by my grotesque body well, in a mirror. I happen to walk by. At home, you could just put on like a button-up shirt backwards and have yourself a little ass-out gown. Sense if, you, if I catch you walking around your apartment <laughs> with a fucking Brooks Brothers shirt on backwards and your ass breathing, we got a problem. It'd be my dad shirt too, because <laughs> I don't have any button downs. I was about to ask if you have any of them. I didn't think you do. My dad came. My dad came the other day for a. Uh, he had like uh, some party he had to go to, and uh, he realized that the button on his shirt had broken. Mm -hmm. And I was yes, like, right. I actually have one mm -hmm. shirt, and I, I gave it to him. And then he left that one here. Just and, gonna rotate. Yeah, and he dresses like a businessman from the seventies. So like right. that huge. Yeah. You know, like when yeah, you tuck, yeah. you tuck it into your knees, kind of. When deal. you tuck it in, it feels like you're tucking in like a blanket. Yeah. It's like, there's yeah. just so much yeah. material here. Yeah. Yeah. So I could let that bad boy. I could, yeah. I could go Tom Cruise with that fucking thing. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're up. Uh, attention. <laughs> <laughs> it was again. This is like, dude. Uh, they did a versus this weekend with uh, Lil Bow Wow versus Soldier Boy, and Soldier Boy the first three songs he picked was just "Make It Clap," his new song. <laughs> he just ran it back three times in a row. That's John right now on his top five. <laughs> same with <laughs> it, 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 It's like again, like I'm just gonna keep saying the same thing. It, it's it's very nice. And if you didn't say something, I probably noticed. But also, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> I am alone. judging you, but also, <laughs> what a chick. You're such an asshole. I'm mm. taking note, but I also hate it. <laughs> what a chick. Uh, I'm going to go with um, the uh, – well, I guess this is more like uh, – uh, I'm, I'm going to go with the, the rude – when you catch a rude nurse – Oh yeah, that's the worst. When you just got some chick, and I understand that you know it's like it's just this is just her job, so she's going room to room, patient to patient. But when all of a sudden you get a surly nurse who's just like fuck you, and it's like listen, lady, I'm clearly at my absolute lowest right now. You think <laughs> I fucking want to be here? You think I want to have to ask you to like, can you pick up that like thing for me, or can you get me this water or whatever? No, I fucking hate this. But when like the nurse shift switches, and then you get. You go from like a nice helpful one to just an absolute bitch, 
and they and you're at their fucking mercy. You know what I mean? They they are your judge, jury, and executioner. That nurse decides what you can eat, what you can drink, what you can take, where you can go, if you can get up, and then they decide to be an absolute bitch about it. <laughs> <laughs> the bitch nurse is your your biggest enemy. Because then guess what? If you're if you're a, a dick back to her, well now like I'll see you you know in 45 minutes. I'm you know, I'll see you in an hour. I'm not gonna come back here again. She was the, she was I'm referring to her like yep, this is the one. Uh, the first nurse I saw at, at the Wednesday morning, and it was like she like gave me. She just I wouldn't even. I'm not gonna give her a bitch tag. I'm gonna give her no nonsense. Right. She was she was no nonsense. Because she'd, also, been, she'd she's been there probably, for thirty years. And especially you know she's probably coming out of COVID. It's like I just dealt with someone who's fucking dying. You got a sore throat. I don't give a fuck <laughs> about you. So it's hard. But I'm also like, well, you're making this way worse. Yeah. Oh, she was like, yeah. She's like I, I wasn't even finishing my answers before she was asking the next one. Yeah. And I was uh, like, this is being mean. Like, right. Just talk. Right. Why are you interrupting Absolutely. me like that? And then it was like. I took my phone out to get like my insurance thing, yeah. and she's like, "Phone's away." And I was like, well, "You just asked me for my insurance, insurance number. Yeah, I don't have a card." Memorized? <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. It was tough. Um, me now? Yep. Yeah. A uh, concern. <laughs> the concern people have for you is mm -hmm. is suffocating. <laughs> it is like I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm always. I'm, I think I've said this before. But like I'm always gonna be fine yeah. until I'm not. Yeah. And, like, when I'm and not, then fine, I'm dead. Yeah. And then don't Whatever. worry about it. Like, I'm fine. I don't know. Like, like, are you like, are you okay? Do you need anything? Do I need anything? No, I don't need anything. What, what can I fucking need? A new throat. Yeah. I need this to go away. Uh, yeah. You can do that. Otherwise, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, what, 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 what? Well, again, I, I know it's you say it, and I and I appreciate it, and I say it. I do the same thing. Yeah. Like, and it's just like, what are you gonna do for me? Yeah. If you, I'm in if you hospital, can help me, otherwise, shut the fuck do? up. Yeah. Leave me alone. There's, there's nothing to do. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, hospital time. Why I don't know why everything takes just like hours. Everything's just like everything that should be a relatively quick thing is gonna take like six hours. You need to get discharged. You're not getting out of there for another like four hours. You need to get uh, like a second opinion. The doctor will be here tomorrow. <laughs> you need to. Uh, can I get a water? I'll come back in like 35 minutes with that. Uh, everything. The discharge is really what drives me crazy. It's like I just want to leave, and I got to fill out all this paperwork. I got to do. I got to walk down this the hall. Discharge I got to go was here. I got to go there. Oh, you can't leave until this happens or that settles in or whatever. It's like it's hospital time is is. Uh, it's like you're in a time warp. It's like yeah, I came in with a sore throat and I left three days later. <laughs> the fuck just happened, and you did nothing for me. Like what? And it just it, 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 it cost me ten thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, great. That's really looking hospital. forward to the bill. Yeah. Really looking Healthcare, forward. Healthcare, awesome. <laughs> Jerks. Yeah, they just sell you on unnecessary surgeries that they don't perform anymore, and then fucking be like, here you go, here you go, check, go check it out later. Uh, but the also that I I actually had kind of an express uh, discharge, mm -hmm. and. That's what led me to walking into a doctor's office the next day without an appointment. They were like, she was so like, she's like, here's your appointment. paper, you're good to go. And I was like, I can just leave. And she's like, yep. And I was like, and this, are this you sure? Yeah. This yeah. appointment's good. She's like, yeah, you're all set. See right. you later. Give me a happy medium. Then. Somewhere in between where I know you're not just kicking me out and you know what's going on. Also, not like 45 hours later. Um, John's digging deep in, in the thesaurus right now. Uh, so, attention, sympathy, sympathy concern. concern. Uh,. A recognition. 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 Don't want to be recognized Don't want to be recognized. Don't, don't recognize me Don't at all. recognize anything I do. Yeah. Unless it's a live show at Nyack, in which case get tickets. July 15th <laughs> at the Improv. <laughs> Let's go. Um, Come recognize us there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but don't don't give me recognition. It's just it's text messaging. It all comes back to text messaging. Stop texting me. And people just don't. Yeah, Mr. It's I love like, the phone calls, though. Would you would you rather prefer like just taking endless phone calls? I took two phone calls while I was there. Yeah, two. Funny. Yeah. What about what about if all those people texted you called? Oh, I just wouldn't answer. Well, you got me there. Got you there. <laughs> yeah, you win that round. You win that round. I'd be like, yeah, I'm just not gonna answer this. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll, I'll talk to people mm -hmm. I want to talk to mm -hmm. because a text is so easy that you have to reply. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, it's real dickhead to ignore a text. Right. It's not real dickhead to ignore a phone call. No, yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Well, allow me to be a, a reasonable ass. Right, right. Uh, I'm gonna go with. I guess it's not sick, but uh, when this is more like post surgery. When I'm in like the throes of agony, and they're like, "What? What can I get you?" And I'm like, "A billion cc's of morphine. <laughs> That's what you can get me." And they're like, "Well, then you're like the junkie. You know what I mean?" And then it's like, "Well, I don't know." And it's like, oh, "I'm gonna get you like uh, here's like an extra strength ibuprofen." And it's like <laughs> they literally ripped stuff out of my spine and put cadaver bones in there. Hit me with the drip, lady. Let's go. Give me what I fucking need. I mean, they, if, if they've ever given you, have you ever had a, um, a button? No. 
they've given like it's like a uh, you hit the button and yeah, yeah. It, it, it administers it, but it's obviously on a timer, and it's like you know it's not gonna work until like forty five minutes from now or whatever the timing. Is. And yeah, I just sit there. <laughs> not working, not working, not working. And it's like, oh, there it is, there it is. It worked, it worked. <laughs> but then they, yeah, the, 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 or it doesn't even have to necessarily be pain medicine too. It's just like they don't want to give you whatever the medication is where you're like, I know what the fuck I need here. Mm. And they're like, oh, I can't do that. It's like, <laughs> Look at me. Uh, yeah. An ibuprofen's not going to fix this, and all right? That's the worst part with me, too, is because, like, and that's probably why I get, like, such little attention at the hospital, because I I understand that my presence wherever is a nuisance. And <laughs> I understand that wherever I am, I'm not wanted. Yeah, like, I mean, that's just a fact. Like, that, that's just not me. That's any human being. Wherever you are, you shouldn't be there. And the, the so when they're like, how are you feeling? I'm, I'm great. How are you doing? And they're like, well, oh, it, oh no! See, uh, that's, that's my other. I'm gonna, I'm gonna snake draft here Can't, and keep that. Like when they're like, um, what's your, what's your pain level on? Right, that's what I mean. Like, I'm like three. Ten. Oh, I'm, I'm like, well, again, this is if I'm, if I'm not feeling it, I'm not gonna lie about it. But I'm like fresh out of a fucking surgery. I'm like, uh, it's a fucking ten. Right. And also that, but like, I don't want people to think I'm a pussy. Even that, I'd be like, oh, sure. I don't give a shit about that. I, what I, uh, the other thing, not, too, not even like thinking I'm a pussy. I, I don't want them to think I'm like using them yeah like, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah i get that but i also i feel like if i say uh, a high number they expect me to be like crying tears and like falling over in the streets like i'm sitting here internalizing how much this fucking hurts just sitting here going like i'm gonna die i'm gonna die this is, this is so painful I, i'd rather be dead than this so just give me the uh, it, it, it's a 10 it's a 10 it's a 10 they're like is it really a 10 like oh, it's a nine and a half then what and they had the little smiley face on the fucking it's like a frowny oh. face or a, it's like, i'm a frowny face i'm fucking frowning all right <laughs> oh fuck i might make a change i i can't now i got i'm, I'm pretty helpful well, you got your you got your fifth i'm pretty yeah, but I'm, I'm like i was gonna go with something not that. Oh, I'm not, not hellbent. Pop permitted is what I meant. Um, so I'm gonna say the spotlight, uh, and and then I'm gonna add a sixth. The spotlight sucks because it does like all the text again. They just it. It's just the text messages. It's, you it's like I am now. I have a chore. Yeah. Like I, you're look, making look, this harder. For I'm me. focused on the 14 hours of tests I'm having. I'm having a bit internally of like, fuck, dude. Like you might actually really fuck this life up. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and and, and I'm no like, text message is gonna help that. Right. And I'm and like and now I just gotta fucking quell your concerns. Yeah. yeah I gotta yeah. fucking deal with like convincing you I, I'm fine. You're, you're texting I'm working me. on convincing me I'm fine. Yeah. You're texting it's, me for your own little like guilty conscience or to feel better about yourself or whatever. And I don't want to have to deal with that. Yeah. Bullshit. Like that's yeah. that's like I, yeah, I don't. I, why do I have to fucking do a tap dance for you to you? So you sleep okay tonight. I don't feel good right now. Just leave yeah. me alone. Right. Like when I'm when I'm sick, I just want to be alone. Right. I just want to fucking. I'm like I'm like a fucking puppy. I'm a dog. Yeah. Go to the woods, to the die alone. Of, yeah, I was gonna say back like, in the closet I'll to die. I'll fucking yeah. see you later and I'll die. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the but the uh, number six. I'm taking a sixth here because I that a stupid thing I did like I always do. <laughs> um, and uh, and the uh, the it's it's the paperwork. Yeah, bro, and, and every single time sign this, sign I that, fucking this, not even not even the signing, it's the questions. Yeah, like and, and every time I I probably filled out two hundred pages of paperwork in the last right. week, and they're all the same fucking thing. Right, all of it, the same goddamn questions, but I treated every single one like it was a new test. Every <laughs> single time, I'm like, fuck, did did I have a great uncle who died? I actually have like, set myself free of this, John. I want you to do this from now on. Just set yourself free of paperwork. Like when they're like, uh, "What is the address of like your your primary physician?" Blank. Yeah. That oh. is blank from now. On. Well, uh, especially working here, like a phone number for your workplace. I used to like look up Dave's cell phone number. <laughs> That's now blank. Dude, like, I what's didn't your, know what's your you this could number, that legally number? do blank. that. Blank. I don't give a fuck. It's blank. You're Dude. getting my name, my address, and like that's it. Emergency contact. Blank. Okay. <laughs> blank. It is. It's. It's like. I, I I think back. Set I still don't have the, free. I still don't have the balls. My mom. No, does. dude. My mom put my mom uh, just puts a big X on the pages. <laughs> just just God. just like no. Nope. No. And nope. that almost that's Not a good idea because that makes it feel like I don't know. They'd be like I don't know. Maybe some doctor did that. Yeah. <laughs> Who would draw a giant X on it? <laughs> but just things that Fine. I just I, 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 I'll, I'll do it logically where it's like. What? Where am I? Am I at? Am I at a doctor? Am I at a uh, uh, like? Am I filling out paperwork for my car? Am I filling? You know, the DMV. It's like when you're at the DMV, they don't need to know like you know my what ethnicity I am or what you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like things that I'm just like you don't need to know this. Blank. Dude, see, I I fill out everyone with mm -mm. with more concern and care mm -mm. than I did on the SAT. Too. It's crazy. No joke. Like I I like I'll fucking I'll be like asthma. 
Oh, I mean, I had an that inhaler. One time I, was coughing. I had an yeah. inhaler when I was six. Yeah. Does that count? Yeah. Like, I'll be oh, like, man. And I'll just sit there. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm going to yeah. put no. no. I'm going to put no. Hopefully that's right. And then like, every I, like, single thing. Pregnant. Am I pregnant? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Am I pregnant? Fucking what is set yourself free? Yeah. <laughs> never again. It's That's great. Smart. That's Once good, you do yeah. it, you'll never go back, man. Mm-hmm. I also have recently changed to I, I tap my, my my credit card now instead of me a, too. Uh, in, insert. Yeah. Oh, tap the breeze. Oh, and yeah. I, I I might even fully convert over to Apple Pay. I do Apple Pay so, whoop, for my whoop. phone. Bingo, bango. Like I just did a double click for that, but I, I haven't done that. I do it for the subway as well. It's, um, it's, but I, I broke, you know, I do this, that thing where I throw my phone everywhere, and it broke. Um, <laughs> Stunning. <laughs> and so my front camera, yeah, it works. Work. Like, I, I can take a picture of myself, but I can't do, it doesn't do Face ID anymore. Well, yeah, so, that's, that's going to be a problem. So, yeah, no, yeah. it's an issue. Yeah. But the, the, the tap is, uh, oh, it's revolutionary. why would anybody insert and, and, and wait and, and plug in? And I got to tip the cap to him, too. Right away worked. Yeah. Remember the, the chip we went through? Ooh, uh, boy, a real dark transition age. period? Yeah. Oh, my God. That was, that was the, the, the transition period for the, the, from swipe to insert chip was like one permanent, awkward, high-five, dap <laughs> yeah. situation. Right? You're going for the hug, uh, the handshake, the dap, the fist bump. Everything was, was, was messy. The tap now, though, Beep, done. Done. Easy. It's great. I don't even know why it's an option. Insert, swipe, or tap. It should be tap. That's it. Double tap it. Beautiful. Uh, and, and and I'm told that the Apple Pay, the full Apple Pay converts is even more freeing. And if you get the Apple credit card, apparently you get 2% back on like everything you ever spent. I don't know what that means, but nice. Yeah, I guess. Well, just think about, you know, 2% of whatever it is you bought, you get that money back. Oh, I can't do that math, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? You don't have to. Oh, it just happens. Congratulations. You made it harder. <laughs> <laughs> Voicemails. Been the it's been the longest running i would say this is legitimately gotta be the longest running interactive segment maybe in podcast history because everybody else who has podcasts longer than us are just like solo shows where they just talk uh-huh you know <clears throat> maybe if you, co- if you consider like bill burr's uh like email box his email line uh you know what i mean you say email funny i say email funny yeah you say it nasally well, I am just kind of choking. You right did, now. right? I'm just saying. I think I'm just saying say things again. nasally. Email? Yeah, oh yeah. Rhea, don't say it anymore. How do you say? <laughs> it? How do you say it? Email. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Not a word out of you. Not a word out of you, you tequila asshole. All right. You pipe down over there. I'm gonna send an email about that. <laughs> email to human resources. <laughs> uh, um, I don't even know how I was going to segue this anyway Simply safe, whatever <laughs> um, Well, Chad, Eleanor Chad and Eleanor Lawrence Or the people who designed uh, and, and founded Simply Safe And they, uh, they had their first ever security system In their kitchen They did it for a very personal reason They had just had their friends Their home was broken into And they uh, decided they needed a safe and simple security system And so they made it happen themselves They set it up And uh, that was 15 years ago And then since then They've been bringing uh, safety to homes absolutely everywhere I was going to say something about how safe and, and consistent they are In the same way the voicemail line is Because I really th- Other than that I think uh, You know Find me a, a th- something where we've been calling in for 10 straight years. I don't think you can do it. We, we, we have like probably like 50,000 phone numbers in there. Like the amount of people who have called. We're coming to all your houses. <laughs> yeah, right? That's why you need Simply Safe because we're going to track you down. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to look up your number. We're going to find you. Uh, Simply Safe, it makes it easy the same way that our voicemails made this show easy. Uh, you go to simplysafe.com slash KFC radio, uh, and it takes two minutes to customize an entire system for your house on their website. Uh, it's a system with highly trained security experts with um, everything from fire, police, uh, poison control, you know, emergency safety, all that stuff uh, that keeps you safe from burglars and earthquakes and fires and floods and everything that threatens your home, your possessions, and your loved ones. So go to simplysafe.com slash KFC radio to customize that system today. You get a free HD camera. You also get a free 60 day risk free trial. So there's nothing to lose. Two months trying it. When you go to simply safe, S I M P L I safe.com slash KFC radio to get yours. Voicemails, let's go. Fight, rest of the gang. I was just listening to the pod and might have had a few beers. Um, I just wanted to confirm my physiotherapist used to be a 
surgeon in the hospital up in Canada on the West Coast and can confirm that Richard Gere had a gerbil removed from his ass. Um, yeah. Have a good night. Peace out. Wait, this is Viva. this is confirmation? Say who is he who's this guy again? Sorry, Will Harper. He's claiming like his surgeon was I, the guy that pulled the gerbil out. I'm I'm skeptical. I, I'm skeptical. We're gonna throw a hard allegedly button on this. Um, we ju I just talked about it with Ari a little bit. Like it's it's okay. one of those things where we talked about the you know the the cum cum stomach. Did you know? I asked Ari because he's a little bit older. Like when we found out that Britney Spears also has that rumor about her. Remember that she had to get her oh, stomach yeah, yeah, pumped, and that, that. We, it was Lil Kim for us. Do you know who it was for him? Um, wait, um, who was it? For? Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. And prior to that was Rod Stewart. Mr. Bovine Joni? Dude sucking so much dick he needed a stomach pump. Rod Stewart I can believe better than Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi doesn't really put off like weird gay vibes to me. No. Rod Stewart's... I mean, rock stars just fuck, man. Yeah, they, I mean, that means that either one day it started with Rod Stewart, or who knows, before that it was Elvis, and before that it was, you know, that one day somebody sucked so much dick they needed their stomach pumped. <laughs> or somewhere out there, somebody just made up the perfect fucking joke rumor lie and it's been run with for generations like imagine being that guy who was like dude in like 1950 i said that about john wayne yeah. and it just it went like wildfire i would be i would tell that to everybody if i made up if i made up the richard gear gerbil legend how cool would that be i i if i'm I, the first person on record to say that richard gear i mean i and you gotta here's a serious question for oh, you good would you trade lives with Richard Gere? Yeah. And just be, every time that guy walks in a room, the only thing people are thinking about, is has this, has this been a dribble in his asshole before? <laughs> take all the money, Kevin, all the all the places the he's gone. Lesser inflammatory questions that are asked when I walk <laughs> into a room. <laughs> John walks in a room, they just go, eh, the gerbil wouldn't even go in there. <laughs> I mean, listen, once... Once there's a story out there about you putting things in your ass, <laughs> it just it just doesn't go away. I don't think I would want to be Richard Gere. And, and oh, I, I gotta I check his net worth. I gotta check his net worth. Whatever it is, better than mine, bro. Any time that man speaks, people are just going dribbling. I would allow that rumor to happen ass. about me for ten thousand dollars. You say that, but nobody. Anybody it just, adds an air of mystery to you. Oh, it's not the mystery you want, sir. Oh, it's a, it's any, not any the mystery, mystery you want. It's the mystery you want. The, oh yeah, the, the, uh, did the girl did the did gun girl shit her pants at a party? You want that mystery I'm about fine you? I'm with that rumor. Yeah, <laughs> I, I. Well, I this, is, this is hard to play this. I it's getting it's sometimes. getting increasingly difficult to do a podcast <laughs> with this man who just does not care about a single solitary thing. Who cares about if I die? Who cares about if people think gerbils are in my ass? Who cares about I, money? Oh, I know. I care. I'm pro it. I'm. You I'm. Want it. I would be appreciative if that rumor happened about me. Yeah. Fight, so, so that fight's got a fucking rat stuck in his ass. If you're rich your gear you gotta you gotta own that way better you know like it, you, anytime you i don't know you're giving like a speech at a function or something you gotta drop a gerbil joke in there you gotta like yeah, reference yeah. it you gotta own that a little more <laughs> but you get even your dad's you, eulogy i know what everyone's thinking <laughs> gerbil in my asshole pop wondered the same thing exactly. he died chasing the answer to that <laughs> yeah i'd be like maybe maybe i did maybe i didn't you'll never know yeah. like just fuck with him a little bit yeah. but just silence yeah. Yeah. silence on the matter where, you had a where is dad today is he in heaven? We'll never know. Just like you'll never know if I had a gerbil. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing today? Uh, how are you doing today, Richard? Doing all right? Maybe I have a gerbil in my ass. Maybe I don't. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like si his silence. He's, this, he's this got to get years, real self-conscious on itchy butthole days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's if he's right, ever, right, if yeah. He, he's like, it's not a gerbil. It's not yeah, a gerbil. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I got dirty underwear on. That's it. It's just fucking hot. Isn't it? Aren't you guys all hot? I don't think you guys all have gerbils in your fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> See, I mean, the fact that he's never like, talked he gets, about it. He gets his balls stuck to his fucking legs. He's doing and a he's stretch. Doing a stretch. Some fucking Gerbo! Some family Gerbo from Indiana ass! goes home. Like, we saw Richard Gere in Times Square outside playing in Hollywood. And he was just trying to get a fucking gerbil out of his ass. <laughs> and, and we are just... Beautifully painting the picture of why I want this rumor about me. <laughs> uh, like right now, I'm just I, I got a wedgie, and uh, if I pick this on live and, and I had this rumor, yeah, he would be like fights had a dribble. That's on the show during the podcast. Yeah. During the podcast. Also, it was a small... I don't understand. I don't get it. The like 
I don't get it. Doesn't it bite? Doesn't it rip apart your fucking insides? Doesn't it like, rip your asshole apart? I know. I don't I know. know claws, but claws I know. and like. I, I said that to Ari. He goes, uh, you know, that's the part of the appeal. So. <laughs> okay. right. I mean, like, I've seen too many times at, at King Richard's Fair, the medieval torture chamber, to know what rats do. Yeah, they rip you apart when they're, when, they're, when they're trapped. And they fucking dig. And they're going to be trapped in a hot butt. And uh, yeah, you don't want a rat, but they're the gerbil family. I, 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 I'm not, I don't think I'm, I don't think I want that known. I don't, I don't think I want that rumor about me. Ah. Unless it's just true, in which case you got to own it better but I, I think that richard gear went with the silence you know no comment for you know the 90s PR. Yeah, because that was the move back in the i day. know but the now uh, you know the move now would be like fucking Fuck send it. a tweet about it joking you yeah, know like the, the move, move now is do a subway commercial about it right or just do it <laughs> be like or or claim like that you're 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 oh yeah i did it and you're discriminating against me <laughs> you're all canceled um i i just don't believe you know ev when everybody says this like i uh, my surgeon I I know a guy. It's like yeah, everyone knows the guy who violates HIPAA. Yeah, I mean, and to me, I I I had a my breach of trust was uh, I guess not even trust, but it was more like oh, you can't really. I guess it is trust in a way. When my I had like my best friend come home from school. I, I think I've told a story before about the the urban legend with the dead dogs in yeah, the bag, yeah. and like he told that story to me like it was one hundred percent true, and I think he really did believe it was true. But and I was like, this is my best friend who had no reason to lie to me, and but he had just been lied to. So I was just like, that was that that was a moment in my life where I was just like, I can't trust anything ever again. <laughs> and so like a random surgeon telling me that or whatever is like, I just don't believe anything anybody says. And I think you're a fool if it's like if I was a doctor, I would I would I would do that all the time. I'd be like, you know, I can I can tell you the truth that that journal story. You know, just like the fuck with people. You Dude, know? I had that. Oh, I I actually pumped Lil Kim's stomach. You know, <laughs> fucking whatever. I had I had a friend who like filled out like someone's herpes medication before. Of course, like, everybody's got that. I mean, no, you didn't. these stories are just all fake. Uh, I think that the silence is deafening when it comes to Richard Gere's gerbil in his ass, and I think that's the truth. Like that's that's all the truth I need. You got to dribble up your butt, bro. <laughs> Next up. Lucky. Yo, JC fights Nick, uh, Jackie, all gang. Um, so I've been using uh, ATI questions recently as opening lines for dating apps like Tinder, Hinge, Bumble, Craigslist, you know. Um, and recently I just uh, saw someone, uh, some girls, prompt was the uh, fuck, marry, kill, Chinese food, Mexican food, and Italian food, and someone else clearly had the same idea that uh, me and my buddy had, where we would randomly pick a card from the ATI box and then just use that that question as our opening line for, like, five different people and then pick another card. So my question is, uh, if you what, what do you guys think the best card in the box wow. uh, would be as an opening line? That's All right. Okay. So that, that's two different. So, by the way, ATI is basically back. It's ATI week. We're building up to the relaunch of Answer the Internet. It's uh, Mondays from now on. Mondays at 6 p.m. So Monday, July 5th is the return of Answer the Internet. We are coming in guns blazing with a, a dynamic duo of Dan Soder and Shane Gillis. They burned it down. We've got about 10 in the tank. We're filming more. So we're coming in hot. So there's going to be new episodes on the YouTube uh, there is going to be a also on the YouTube this week. One thing I learned it is the story of when I used to get hookers to come over and just watch The Sopranos with me. Subscribe now. Uh, also, we're relaunching the Answer the Internet app with new decks of cards and new features where you can vote and organize your cards and uh, randomize them uh, and and entirely new questions. Uh, but as far as the original 500, the best opener, they are they really are like. If you want to, like, have a conversation or not like a pickup line because, like, who does that? But if you're, like, trying to have a conversation with a girl or a guy at the bar or strangers, you want to just get to know people, some of them are really great, like, conversations. Bro, I pieces. get people texting me, like, late at night being like, yo, can I have some questions? Yeah. Like, why don't you fucking buy just, a box, dickhead? I was going to say, you know, they're out there. You don't have to go through me. <laughs> yeah, buy a box. Buy a fucking app. Did yeah. you, we got free ones on the app. Just download the app. Right. Why are you fucking bothering me right you can now? Download I'm in the app. hospital. <laughs> 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 the best. Um, I think we've God. seen a great response. Here's what I think. For and this guy was talking about like hitting on chicks, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you know a little air of like sex involved yep. in that. I think the porn stars murderers is a great one. Porn stars murderers gets, because girls gets love the true crime, and you start talking about porn, 
and then you start talking about what defines a porn and then it's like well i've been on camera before have you, have you ever filmed it you know what i mean you start to get some you you make some inroads to talking about sex uh, maybe you, you reference some murderers and bring up some true crime docs. If you're talking about hitting on a girl, that one, and every time that comes out, I mean, we've done this like 10 times and every time it's, it's a war. People are screaming and yelling. They get passionate about it. Talk a little murder and sex. People get a little hot and fucking <laughs> bothered. Uh, that one might be it for me. Um, I like, um, just, uh, one song to play with every time you orgasm. Yeah, then, again, yeah. You're, ta- you're talking a little sex there. Yep, little, yep. Little There's coming. a couple of those, like uh, one song, one one song when you orgasm, or one song when your dick gets hard, or you know, I guess you can't ask to check that one. But there's a couple like songs and sex. <laughs> when your pussy are... gets wet. What song you like to hear? <laughs> uh, Say it those just like are good. Too. There was Say, send her a video message saying it that way. Th- there was uh, one that I I saw. Uh, I almost asked Ari. Even I even I even elected to not show it to Ari Shafir. It was just like. It was, uh, you have to eliminate one for the rest of your life. Blowjobs, regular sex, and anal sex. <laughs> Just like, God damn. Some of these questions. <laughs> Fucking crazy. Um, but yeah, those, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of good ones that are, uh, you know, dancing around some of the more taboo topics. There's ones that dive right in. But po- Porn Stars Murderers and Orgasm Sex, or Orgasm Song are two very good ones. But download the app, buy the game. Subscribe to Answer the Internet on YouTube. I mean, Answer the Internet was like one of our biggest franchises like ever that just got decimated by COVID. But now it's just fucking back. I mean, I used to get gassed up every time we had a new. We, this was back on Tuesdays when we used to drop them. But like millions of views, tons of downloads on the app, a lot of people buying the game, and it's still like gone. You know, sales and and like followers and shit has still gone strong, even though we've kind of been on this like almost two year hiatus. So it's like a big piece of business is back. Uh, Abella, uh, I spoke to Abella the other day. She's already, she's coming back in August. She's like already planning out her answer. The <laughs> she's like, I can't wait to come back and burn it down again. So maybe she can be. I love that record. woman. Yeah. She's amazing. Uh, Heavy conspiracy theorist. I was like, oh, I need to marry you. How can I marry you? She had a boyfriend. You, fuck. Yeah. I think so. I'm enjoying There goes my tweets. chance. I said fuck as if that was like a real thing. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> oh, I was gonna date the twenty-four year old in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Relax, Kevin. Relax. Uh, all right, last voicemail is brought to you by BetterHelp. Uh, if if you know somebody who's been down on their luck physically and mentally recently, somebody who maybe predicted their own demise in a matter of days, somebody who uh, who has been overwhelmed with attention recently, <laughs> was struggled with. Interacting with people and and I was own health. I was and I've told my therapist this before, and I did it again this week. I haven't told her about it yet. I was so depressed on Friday that I canceled therapy. Wow! And, and she, I, I told her that before, and she's like, "There's some counterintuitive she, things." She's like, "Yeah, those are the times you should really see me." I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's just not into it. Though. No, I know <laughs> like, that's, that's because we're still not we're still not there yet. Yeah. You know, we got We got to be converted. Like, I'm just gonna tell you I'm being dramatic about a throat thing, and I'm fine. So. I don't know. We'll just skip it. I'll see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> if you are still on the fence or not totally, uh, you don't understand the process or you, you're a little a bit afraid or there's stigma, uh, that's where BetterHelp comes in because it's uh, it's mental health help, therapy help, all via technology. Whether you want to do it on the phone, whether you want to uh, do it over like a FaceTime video chat or a text message, uh, you can call, talk, connect to a doctor in under 48 hours. So you don't need to... Uh, go to a doctor's office. You don't need to, you know, find them, get there, wait in the waiting room, worry about their schedule and when they can be seen. Uh, and that's where they will connect you with someone, like I said, within uh, 48 hours. And it's more affordable. It's easier. It's uh, honestly, it's like just there's just an unnecessary step in, in seeing someone in person anymore for anything. You know, we've just proven like everything should just be done over the computer. You can do it right now. You can do it easier and uh, more affordably. So go to BetterHelp.com slash KFC and you're, and uh, our listeners will get 10% off their first month of uh, mental health help. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash KFC. Get 10% off that first order and start fixing your brain today. What up, Kev, Fight, Jackie, Nick, whoever – else is in there with you guys hey so i got a real brain buster for you so say an alien spaceship lands in your backyard and he's asking you to give him the best authentic american meal 
Like, uh, where you guys, what do you guys give them? I'm talking appetizer, entree, sides, cocktails, dessert. Where are you guys going after? Wow. I'm looking forward to hearing you guys. This is a great you question. A All right, Viva. The most authentic American meal possible. Okay. I yeah. am going to go with... Now, are we giving specific restaurants or are we cooking No, this? I, I think this yeah. is like general foods. Okay. But I think doing like courses is allow, allows a little bit of a cheat, you know, where you can go like appetizer, uh, main course with some sides, and then the dessert. And that allows a lot of, uh, a lot of like leeway there. I pensive about it. So I would say for the main uh, – I would say for the main meal of Americana – I would go cheeseburger fries, like a McDonald's type of situation. I would go with like a, a yeah, cheeseburger fries and. Well, where's your appetizer? You gotta start. I know, start I know, I, I haven't figured that out yet. All right, I'll go first. Apps, mozzi sticks. We're doing, we're doing mozzi sticks. I feel like that's very Italian. Nah, fried cheese. Fried. You're using a fryer. We're American, baby. Yeah. I'm doing mozzi sticks and I'm doing cheese steak egg rolls. Now egg. Egg rolls nope. are Chinese. These are fucking Americanized. No. Yes. They're a, oh, no, I'm right. Egg rolls are now American. A cheeseburger egg rolls, yeah. No, just because you're you're taking the... the no, no. Yeah, yeah. Rolls, no, I'm taking another culture thing. I'm making it mine. It's American as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go for my appetizer. I'm gonna, I'll go buffalo wings. Buffalo, Amer buffalo New York. America. Right. Buffalo wings are a good one. I'm sticking with my answers. I, you, can, you can fucking fight me on this if you want. I don't give a shit. I'm doing mozzarella sticks, and I'm doing fucking... Uh, the other thing I said. Egg rolls. Cheeseburger egg rolls. Yeah. Egg rolls. Yeah. A fucking, a fucking American A fucking dish. appropriated fry into a fryer machine? Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. First the of all, those are also my two favorite ones, obviously. <laughs> but can't wait to go get a mozzarella stick after this. Um, you know what I think a place should do, by the way? <laughs> I think a place uh -huh. should make... Instead of like eight little ones, you should get a giant singular mozzarella stick. Nah, like a nah. dick size, no. like a like a, a, a Owen Gray size <laughs> mozzarella stick. And, ah, eat nah, a, eat a that's part log. of the best part. The fucking you dip, you dip. By the way, I don't bite. Dip, I don't like the marinara. Ah, oh, you're a buffoon. Just straight you, cheese. You dip, you bite. Ruin, you ruin the you best flip, part. Flip, boom, bite. No, yeah. I just double yeah. dip like no. a motherfucker. Nah, you don't give a shit about that. <laughs> what are you going for your meal? My meal. Like, I, I think, uh, you know, it's not, like, the best meal. But when I think of, like, an American meal, it's, like, a cheeseburger, fries, McDonald's type of situation. For Fast sure. Food, you know? For sure. But if I'm, if I'm trying to impress the guy. But that's what I, so that's right? what I so mean. So I'm looking like, at steak. Is that steak's American? American? Yeah. yeah. All, the, meat, all our beef and you know, all red our meat. Yeah. yeah. All the flyover so steaks. So I, I, I could get down with that. I can understand that. that I'll, line get, I'll give him a steak, some mashed potatoes. Okay. Right? Some mashed potatoes in there. Maybe a baked potato. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'll ask him. Uh, and then... I'm not putting anything healthy on it. I refuse to do no, it. No, it's not American. Um, so I can't have any like green beans, no asparagus. Uh, probably some macaroni and cheese. Macaroni, yeah, craft. Mm -hmm. Yep, rugrats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what's the fourth thing on my plate here? Steak, mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese. I think like a like a, a bread of some sort, like carbs. Like a like a like a. Well, I got my complex carbs covered in my mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think like the outback, like uh, that, like brown bread or yeah. whatever, like one of those. Yeah, but that kind of, that's more of an appetizer. Maybe maybe a palate cleanser. I don't know. Um, but corn. the corn, corn, yeah, corn on the cob. There you have it. Mm -hmm. Corn on the cob. I would maybe do that with my my burger and a fries. stick of butter to rub to fucking twist yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Burger fries, corn on the cob, uh, and then I think for dessert, uh, I think like a. Like a donut, like a decadent. I think when I think of like American desserts, I think of like those weird donuts. It's like oh, I was gonna say Mississippi mud pie. Sure, maybe with an Oreo crust. Whoa, <laughs> you are so fat. <laughs> you have been more like animated in this fucking question than I have I've seen ever out of you. Uh, and then I I think uh, for a while I'm drinking my while I'm having my wings. You gotta give them like a, a ice cold Miller Light. Yes. And then for my – while I'm having my burger and fries and shit, like just like, like a 75-ounce soda. <laughs> like a 120-ounce <laughs> Coca-Cola. I, I like a beer or a No, whiskey. that's for your dessert. That's for your after, uh, oh, after yeah. dinner drink. <laughs> you know, you have some American whiskey, some Tennessee, you know, Jack Daniels type shit. Uh, that's a good but question. But yeah, that's an I American like that. meal. It's an American meal. We should oh, add that God, to the I game. I want to go eat it right now. Eat it. Mm. Eat it like you did. That's why you got a pussy in your throat. <laughs> uh, great question, though, for aliens to – 
mean, what do you think aliens eat? You know, wouldn't that be wild if they came down? They, they, we, Dip and we dots. swapped meals. Dipping dots. <laughs> <laughs> they had a rough week, huh? <laughs> their their owner like went to jail for like assault or something. Like really? That. Yeah, they're like yeah. founder created like it was like sexual assault or something. Wild. Oh heavens! Yeah, not great. I didn't know that. But uh, never mind. As we're on the, the aliens are in the middle of a boycott for that. As we're talking about aliens, uh, we've got an interview right now with Harvey Levin from TMZ. You might be asking why uh, TMZ dude has an alien interview. It's because TMZ has a new special out tonight on Fox, 8 p.m. 7 Central. It's called TMZ Investigates UFOs, a like legitimate, serious deep dive uh, on why these uh, UAPs uh, un un what's the UAPs? It's un not identified. It's un. Something aerial phenomenon. Hmm. It's the new shit. It's not UFOs anymore. So U- it's a UAPs. Wop. That's a wop. It's That's a wop. It's a <laughs> uh, So yeah, tonight's special with them talking all about the possibility, of the existence of aliens, and what are these UFOs? It's brought and this interview with Harvey is brought to you by Slick Spirited Ice. Yay. If you're thinking about ingesting alcohol <laughs> in a preposterous <laughs> manner before you do so. Just try Slick Spirit Ice <laughs> because they've got alcohol in a icy ice pop. Uh, what do you even call those? Like a like a little like cylinder, a little frozen plastic cylinder, yeah, a tube of sorts. Tube. That's the yeah. word I'm looking for. A little <laughs> frozen tube of uh, you know snow cone type of uh, flavor. Fits right in your mouth. Real easy. Real easy. Just ingest it the normal way, right in your mouth. Uh, and they've got flavors of all sorts of daiquiri, margarita, uh, all, all the beachy, tropical drinks you can imagine. Uh, it is that with the alcohol right in there, slick spirited ice. I think it's like 8% alcohol too, so it gets the job done. It's like eating uh, icy pop or a snow cone or uh, ice pop in the in the summertime, except you're going to get your buzz on. Nice Saturday morning. Oh, it's is. great. And it's great Just for the hangover nice to start ease into day. it. You know, you don't want to, like, rip a shot right away or do anything too uh, aggressive. You just chew and, and suck on a spirited, slick spirited ice. The next thing you know, uh, your inhibitions are lowered and you're having a good time. You're feeling good. Uh, it's great for any barbecue, any day at the pool, any day at the beach. Just fill up a freezer, fill up a cooler, and uh, head out on the boat, whatever it may be. Bring bring the cooler with you and enjoy some slick spirited ice all day long in the summer. You know I hate summer. It's, it's things like this that you got to do to make it bearable. Where you're gonna be nice and cool, you're gonna get your buzz on, and uh, we're gonna get through these hot, terrible summer days together, me, you, and Slick Spirited Ice. So, uh, head over to your local Walmart or your liquor store and load up for the coming weekend. Load your freezer up with some Slick Spirited Ice. Uh, to learn more, go to Slick S L I Q Spirited Ice dot com. Once you slick, you'll never be the same. This ad has been brought to you by 21 Holdings, LLC in West Chicago, Illinois. Must be 21 and up to purchase and consume. Please drink responsibly. It's Harvey Levin on KFC Radio. Let's talk to him. I was just, uh, Harvey, I was just looking through, you know, just doing a quick uh, Google search and just making sure I'm up to date on everything. I don't believe your birth date for one second, sir. You look phenomenal for your quote-unquote age. I think you must be lying about it. Holy shit. I will tell you this. given what you just said on Friday, I uh, had to text something to my uh, or to go call my executive producer for the UFO show. And by accident, I hit FaceTime and my face came up and I literally jumped out of my scare. I, I, my chair, I scared myself. <laughs> you know, so, how that happens to everybody, thank, man. Thank you, but, thank you, but. <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter, they do a thing where before you retweet an article, it's like, are you sure you have you read the article or whatever it is? They should do that with FaceTime. Like before we start this call, are you sure you want to see yourself? And you're, you're or, like, look in the look in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or how about it just doesn't default to that? Just have it flipped around, and then I need to push the button to see myself, just so I know ambushing me with my own face is not cool. Um, right. <laughs> so uh, we got a lot to talk about. Obviously, the the new special is the main reason TF, uh, TMZ investigates UFOs. Um, I I'm a UFO nut myself. I, I love like all the conspiracy theories. I love thinking about space and ETs and all that. Um, and I have noticed for myself that every time I've made a video or written a blog or done anything about UFO talk, as much as it's always piqued people's interest. I feel like recently, with the with the government confirming a lot of these things, people seem to kind of be like, 
Ah, okay, whatever. I, I kind of, uh, I kind of like knew that already. Like, it doesn't seem like it has the same uh, conspiracy type feel when the government's like, yeah, we don't really know what's going on. They almost are agreeing with the people now. It's kind of like we're all in the same boat. Is like, what the hell's going on? I think you nailed it. I think you just totally nailed it. That is exactly the point. That until a couple of years ago, people who were really looking at this and even looking at it seriously were considered fringe or crazy or unhinged. And I think in the last couple of years, there really has been a sea change. I think there are reasons for it. And a lot of it has to do with certain people like former Senator Harry Reid, who really has been working to legitimize this, not only legitimize it, but to make it a priority uh, since 2007. And there are other senators, Marco Rubio, and there are a lot of people who worked at the Pentagon. And I think that this has been building and building and building. And in a way, social media has exposed a lot of people to some of this stuff in ways they haven't been before. And I think there's been this general push. And I finally, Congress said to the Pentagon, we want a report. And they ordered it. And I think that even though the report is hollow in many ways, the fact that it was done is a big deal. Yeah, I, I think they're even just the fact that they're willing to admit that I think is is very scary, by the way. I feel like my my vibe on it is like, I hope that it's aliens, because if it's someone else here on Earth that can do some of the shit that these aircrafts are doing and it's not us, we're in trouble because these ships can do some yeah, wild again, things, man. I, by the way. That is exactly what some of the scientists and former Pentagon people told us, that the scariest thing would be if it's foreign technology. You yes. know what the reality is? You know what the reality is? No way. No way. No, Th no way. So, so meaning what? Do you, you, think, you think that that means it, it is extraterrestrial then? Look, the way we did this um, show was we knew that the Pentagon had five buckets they were putting these UFOs in. U.S. technology foreign adversaries, natural phenomenon, uh, airborne clutter, and other. So we have a Harvard scientist and Pentagon officials and a Navy pilot and U.S. senators and investigative journalists and others, and we went through them one by one, and we took one by one, took them off the table. This isn't human technology. We couldn't do this. We have not, we can't do it and no foreign government can do it. And if a foreign government could do it now, which they can't, these have been seen since 1947. So in 40s, think back to 1947, we had, somebody had the ability on earth to go from 80,000 feet to sea level in a second and a half without wings, propellers, or a propulsion system. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. breaking the sound barrier without causing a sonic boom. That isn't technology human beings possess. Now, the people you interview, are they fr as frustrated as what Kevin and, and you agreed with, where they're like, <coughs> why aren't people going crazy about It should this? be the front like Because I'm kind of on the other side where I'm kind of like, eh, I don't need to understand everything. I, I get it. Like, whatever. There's there's things in this world I can't comprehend. You're the problem. <laughs> You're part of the problem. And uh, I, 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 that must frustrate people who have been working to expose this truth for so long where they're like, look, we're telling you. Yeah. You guys have wanted this. You've made movies about it. You've written articles about it. And we're telling you. It's real. And for some reason, you guys are just like, eh, we got stuff going on. It's crazy. Well, first of all, two things. One, though, a lot of those guys had their careers ruined because they spoke out. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about serious people like Pentagon officials, and we have some of them, some of them on. Um, and it's interesting that in the report, um, the uh, government says, stop the retribution against these people. And the irony is, they're the ones that were the ones retaliating at the Pentagon against these people. But uh, at least in the report, they said, stop it. Mm -hmm. They just said, stop it. And yes, there are a lot of frustrated people, but the reason a lot of them are frustrated is because of the unknown. That the, And finally, this report acknowledges, as long as we don't know, this is a security threat to our country. Right. These yeah. things have been swarming military ships. They have been swarming nuclear facilities. They have almost hit some of our jet fighters. I mean, think about this. The skies, they see them every day. God forbid a commercial airliner hits one of these things. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden everybody says, oh, why didn't we look at this 10 years ago? Well, 10 years ago is now. Right. So look at right. now before that happens. But there is a security threat to this country 
as long as we don't know what it is. That's what I think would get people, more people to really think about it is I think some people think of it as it's, you know, UFOs or it's aliens or or thinking of it as aliens rather than we just need to figure out what's going on for safety measures, I think is kind of uh, the, the mindset that people need to be in. I, I think that when people, when the government's hiding something, they are like, we deserve to know. And then as soon as it's like, okay, we tell you, they're not as interested if it's not something behind the curtain. If it's not a conspiracy that we're discovering, if it's just something that they're telling us, it just becomes like any other military news or anything else where it's like, ah, okay, it's no longer a secret. I don't have the same salacious, juicy, like, interest that I once did. But now it is more than ever. It should be like, we're showing you the video. We're confirming it's real. And I think people just keep moving the goalposts. Now it's like, until I see a high definition video with an alien driving it who gets out and says, I am an alien. I'm not going to believe anything. It's like, what more do you need than the government saying, yeah, we don't know what's going on and we have materials from another planet. And I'm not jumping to the conclusion that these are aliens. Although I have to say, I believe that there's a, there's gotta be a intelligent life somewhere else in the universe, but it is something and it's not us and it's not a foreign government and it's not natural phenomenon because natural objects don't move in formation right. so we can scratch that and it certainly ain't airborne clutter like plastic bags <laughs> and that leaves you with other right. i mean that's that was their catch all they leave you with other so wait what would and you what is other what would you say two questions what would you say you really think it is and did you uh, did your did you change your mind at all from the beginning of this process to the end of the special well i learned a ton i will tell you that i learned a lot and what's my opinion? I don't know what it is. However, I will say this, that people who say it can't be aliens, it can't be from another star system, people who say that, I just don't get them. Because, yeah, we are um, intelligent life on Earth, right? But are we the only intelligent life in the universe? I don't think so, man. I mean, how it's so self-absorbed to jump to that conclusion. Yeah. So if you th if, if you guys think about this, I mean, I'm old enough to remember this as a little kid and I was mesmerized by it, that in the last 60 years, guys, 60 years, we have launched people into space, landed them on the moon. We have gone to Jupiter and Pluto. We um, are penetrating interstellar space or on the verge of it. So if we can go that way, think about if there is intelligent life somewhere else. And let's say there are 200 years ahead of us. That's nothing in the universe, right? Right. But think about what 200 years oh, is yeah. technologically. Seriously, yeah. Look what we did in 60. Look right. what we did in 60 years. So if we can go that way, why couldn't they go that way? 100%. Yeah. You know, we're going from horse and buggies and shit to, you know, interstellar right. travel, like it, you said. It, I, I realize it re runs in direct opposition for me being like, well, whatever. But it does kind of feel like um, almost like the natives watching the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria show up. We are like, what, what the, the hell is that? Is that? <laughs> That's probably not a big deal. <laughs> and then, like, next thing, it's a pretty big fucking yeah, deal. Yeah, you better. You, you, it's a big fucking deal <laughs> is right, man. I, I, I think uh, the I don't think people think of the idea of that it can be uh, – extraterrestrial aircraft that's not necessarily loaded up with extraterrestrial beings the same way that we have drones and and you know un, unmanned aircraft and stuff it, it you know you know it doesn't have to be a little green man for it to be uh something outside of this planet i don't think people consider no, that i mean really. look we, we we're we're in outer we're on mars right now right exactly and other countries are too we don't have any people there but we're exploring it right it's it's and it's, so and, yeah and, and it's like look it's one thing to say, I don't know, but people who say, I know, I, yeah, I don't know. That's get. crazy. Especially Whether regular ass say, people. <laughs> even, even non-regular ass people. It's like, <laughs> you know, I, I'm serious. I mean, at a point they don't know. Right. And, and, you know, to say, oh, there can't be intelligent life somewhere else. How can somebody say that? Right. They don't know. And so all I'm saying is, look, do I believe it? I do. That I believe that there is intelligent life. I can't prove that. I can't tell you what these objects are, but I think we can tell you what they're not. And when you are left with other, 
it starts to become paradigm changing. Well, you know what the problem is too? So many of the people who aren't regular, let's say your professors and people in the military, or the government, whatever, a lot of these people have put out research and books <coughs> and theories and dissertations explaining why it's not, you know, extraterrestrial or why it is this or that. And then when there's new proof, new evidence, new whatever that comes forward, and it basically flies in the face of the last, you know, three decades of their work, they'll do anything to dig their heels in and try to be right and try to say, you know, what I said 10 years ago is still correct rather than just being like, all right, there's new evidence to the contrary. Let's investigate that and I'll write a new book on that. But people don't like to admit when they're wrong and they, there's going to be a lot of people who have to do that if one day the, you know, the truth finally fully comes to light. People don't like that. I, I, I think you're right. And as a matter of fact, one of the people we talked to on the show is a Harvard science professor, Avi Loeb. And he believes there is intelligent life out there. He believes that there is such a thing as aliens. And I, I love his metaphor. He said, if we just shut that off and close the door and don't think about it, I love what he said. He said, he said um, then we behave like cavemen who somehow look at a cell phone and say, oh, that's just another shiny rock. Yep, <laughs> yep. He is we the king, gotta, by the way, the king of metaphors like that, uh, that make it so simple to understand. He, he's, I've interviewed but, uh, him as well. He's amazing with that. And it's so true the way uh, he describes it. He, he's so great. And, you know, the, some of the most impactful things for me were metaphors on this show. Um, we interviewed a, a Navy fighter pilot and he um, actually wrote up a report and talked to his commanders about what he was seeing every day off of the, uh, his ship. Um, and I was asking him, why do you suppose other pilots have it? And he kind of sat back and he said, because there is so much retribution against people who have spoken out, smart people and good people. He kind of looked into the camera and he said, you know, he said, when you're mowing a lawn, it's always the longest blade that gets cut first. And no one wants to be the long blade. And mm -hmm. I just thought, God, that is so smart. Mm -hmm. That is so smart. And, and I think he's right. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot riding on the line for a lot of people here. Uh, I, I think part of the reason, though, that sometimes people, regular people I I ignore it or uh, don't pay as much attention to it is because of all the other shit TMZ is reporting on, <laughs> because people love all of that stuff. Uh, more so than, you know, some of the hard shit that's going to rack your brain or cause you to think where it's like, I just want to hear about, you know, Taylor Swift versus Scooter Braun or whatever else is going on. That's just kind of the the entertainment, you know, the pop culture stuff. I was going to say, yeah, I can confirm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Taylor Swift guy. Uh, I right can here. confirm. I'm far more interested in Taylor Swift than I am. In I'm going to disagree. Life. I'm going to disagree with you on that. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. I mean, we do silly stuff and fun stuff, but also, you know, what we cover is not celebrity. We cover pop culture. Right. And pop culture includes all sorts of things, sports and, you know, and and politics and social justice mm -hmm. and all sorts of things that we cover. And over the years, one of the things I've noticed, especially on the website, is that people are really interested in important things, too. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the biggest stories we broke was Donald Sterling's rant. Mm -hmm. And it changed basketball because they were really interested in it. And we had a similar kind of story with football, you know, um, with the NFL. And, you know, people are not frivolous. And but at the same time, people are not, you know, this is to me the big one of the big issues with the media, that when you present yourself, it's like, are you a serious guy? Are you a funny guy? Are you mm -hmm. a no, That's not what people are. A person can be funny and then serious, and then all sorts of things. Yeah. So to me, this is about showing a personality that's kind of broad, mm -hmm. where sometimes you can be you know, silly, and sometimes you can be super serious, and all the stuff in between. So I've noticed on our site that people aren't saying, oh, I don't want to hear about the important things. Plenty of people wanted to hear about important things over the last year, mm -hmm. for yeah. sure, Yeah. Right. No as doubt. much as anything. So, you know, we're all people and we can look at things seriously and funny. Yeah, there's a range. But I think I, this, is, this is in the zeitgeist of what people are interested in. I, I think that that's actually become a, like even a broader problem than it is now what you're saying in the media. We're like, we definitely used to do it. Back in the day, I think about it all the time where we would be like, ESPN said this. 
And it's like, well, ESPN's a million different fucking people. Yeah. And it happens with us now. We're like, oh, Barstool's doing that? Like, no, no, Barstool's not. I am. I work for Barstool, but I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And I have a, a different kind of thing. But I think it's even gotten bigger where people don't even say ESPN or Barstool or TMZ anymore. People say the, the media. media. Yeah. And it's like, the media said, like, what the fuck does that mean? Right. Or the mainstream <laughs> media. Or it's like, you know, it's just, it's broadening way too much where there's, there's a million different types of people in the media. It's, it is interesting, though, that TMZ, I think, has become, uh, I probably, I would say, the most trustworthy news outlet in a way where um, it, it's at the point for me where it's like, I'll wait till TMZ, especially on social media where people rush to get their takes off. And like with Tiger recently. We, I mean, yep. we, we made the mistake of believing the first one, but it was like, well, wait till TMZ when says TMZ something says to see, it, like, it's, it's actually true. an accident. Yeah. When, when, when did that, uh, when do you think that? became true for TMZ where it's like this is we're not just you know we're not a tabloid we're not a inquirer we're not just uh you know here for clicks we're actually kind of reporting and people now know that's the reputation yeah I mean look I, I it's hard for me to know <laughs> um you're probably in a better position to know that than me I'm kind of insular I mean you know we just work all the time <laughs> yeah and right. yeah, but you know when we when we set it up I mean it was always set up as a news operation I never understood why you know a site that covered pop culture or celebrity news or whatever else it's all the same thing i mean you use the same skills in you know reporting whatever the field is you're using the same skills so you know you get good producers and you get you know lawyers to vet things and researchers and all so you know i mean really from the beginning that was the plan. I mean, we had we had that system set up. What, so from just from day, over. day one, it was like we got to make sure we hired the right uh, a certain uh, level of lawyers, I mean, reporters, personalities, all that. Yeah, I mean, it's always been that. And I'm not going to say we haven't been silly and whatever because we have. But again, I, to me, it's just kind of part of a personality rather than just saying, OK, this is who we are. We can be, you know, funny and we can be really serious. And that's really the goal here. So I don't know. I mean, look, I mean, 2000, what was it? 2006, we did, you know, the Mel Gibson story, you know, on Pacific mm -hmm. Coast Highway. So, you know, we've been kind of in the space for a long time now. Is there uh, in the never ending race to be like first with news, but also correct with the news? Is there uh, are there like a harsh penalty, let's say, if somebody runs with something too soon? Or do you have a certain like protocol where it's got to meet all of this before you run with it? Because I think that's where people always get burned is they want to get it out. They want to be first. And then they're always inevitably wrong. You guys are pretty fast but almost always right so that's a it's we, impressive we, 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 sometimes you make the mistake of thinking we're pretty fast when you don't know how long we've worked on something before you <laughs> yeah, see it. yeah right 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 and and we there, there are so many things we don't do either because it's not right to do or we don't know it mm -hmm. and you got to know it and and that isn't look that is i'm not saying we're perfect because we're not and have we made mistakes yes but we really take that seriously and try not to make them. And we'll give up a story before we do something like that. We just don't roll the dice. You know, when you roll the dice, you know, people see that. Yeah. And, you know, if you're wrong here and there, all of a sudden people start. Yeah, I mean, you guys are saying it. So mm -hmm. we take that really seriously. We really do. What was it? Uh, fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. Did I shut oh, you up? Wait, yeah, you did. I had a, I had a fucking question. Son of a... God damn it, Harvey. <laughs> Mesmerized you. You did. I was like enraptured. Oh, God damn it. Wow. <laughs> what, what was the... Uh... Oh, I know what I was going to say. We were talking about silly. And I, I do have to say I noticed something in the, the change in silly to uh, the, the TMZ voice. And he's a little more serious in the trailer for this. Yeah, I mean, we have a couple of different voices. And yeah, this is not, uh, this UFO thing is so serious. I mean, we did not approach this in, there, you're not going to see a joke or anything on this show. This is a really serious look, you know, with Harvard scientists and Navy pilots and Pentagon officials and U.S. senators. This is one where silly doesn't belong. Mm -hmm. I mean, we really wanted to tell a story, a story about what are, what do we think these things aren't? and what's left, and why the cover-up, and why the retaliation. We have new video that nobody's ever seen that's really interesting. And then how do you go forward from here? What do you do? 
So there was a lot in this thing. And uh, you ain't going to see no jokes. Did did you ever get to a point where you had, like, government pushback or anything like that, where people were saying, no. like, this is – you've come far enough? We didn't really work with the government other than some senators um, that, you know, we needed permission because there are people, you know, like I said, these former Pentagon people who were in the government, who worked on this stuff, who know a lot. So, you know, I, I think the, the government's not going to talk about – what we really want to know. A lot of this is still classified. They're not, you know, one of the crazy things to me um, that Jeremy Corbell said, which is so true. Um, he's in the, he's a uh, an investigative filmmaker. You know, he said, you know, over the weekend after the report came out, he said, so the Pentagon is saying we don't know if it's UFS technology. That should scare the crap out of everybody if it's mm -hmm. true mm -hmm. that the Pentagon doesn't know if it's U.S. technology. Of course they know. Right. <laughs> of course they know. And uh, it's not. Do you – was this a personal, like, interest of yours, uh, UFOs in general? Or was it, like, did you make the decision to uh, let's pursue this? Or, like, how does this – a project like this even come about? Fox came to us, and I was always interested in it but not passionate about it. And, you know, we all had to get a quick education that went way beyond what we knew. And I am now – really passionate about mm -hmm. this because I think it's a really important thing to understand. I'm not passionate in the sense of saying, oh, I know what it is. I'm passionate because we don't. Right. And I, I think that's super important uh, for the country and the world to figure out. It's a little like matrixy, a little like red pill, blue pill. Once, once you kind of go down the path and start especially learning some of the stuff you probably learned, it's like regular old trivial stuff doesn't seem to matter as much where you're like, I got to know. I, I got to figure this out because there's this big, you know, grand mystery that the world is is just not seemingly taking serious enough. I hope the documentary really like pull like pulls that out of people. Uh, that was the goal. That was the goal. I mean, the goal is really to get people to think, too. And, you know, because I think the mistake some people make is they they walk in with a premise and they say, we think it's this and we're going to spend the next hour justifying it. Mm -hmm. We did the We flipped that. We said, here are the things that the government says it could be. Let's look at each one, one by one, and see what we're left with. I, I that's like that. the way we Because I, I feel like so many documentaries these days do just start with like, here's what we believe. Innocent, and then, guilty. And whichever. then we'll show you exactly yes. what happened. Like, yeah. I, you know, I, I always think back to Making a Murder, where it's like, Stephen Avery's innocent. Here's seven hours why. And then it's like, well, he probably did it, actually. Never mind. Yeah. And I, I like where it's like, look, it could be anything. Right. Here's, here's, here's the options. What, uh, but you're, you're, you're right. A lot of these, a lot of these, you know, it sells better if you have a clear point of view. If you're doing a story where you're saying, "We don't know," that's not as, on the surface at least, compelling as saying, "Here's what we think, and now we're going to prove it." Yeah, because right. you're not giving someone something where they can show up to a cocktail party and be like, "Guess what I know yeah. because I watched an hour or something." Yeah, you can't just regurgitate. Well, I, I, I will. T I will tell you this. What it is going to do is people who think who dismiss it and say, "Ah, it's probably U.S. It's probably Russia," they're going to be shocked. Mm, all right, uh, we have a question here that we've asked throughout the years. Uh, I'm interested in your take now. If let's say aliens are real, or, or I should say, when they you know reveal themselves to be real, uh, and they were to come down, and the U.S. Uh, the the world had to send one person to be the ambassador for the human race to make first contact, who would you send up there? Or out there. Because ah. I'm starting to think Harvey Levin might be a good idea, by the way. <laughs> no, he's got no, 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 the no, legal no. background. Mm -hmm. He's got the pop culture. He knows people. He knows how to present himself. You might not be a bad choice, Harvey. I'm going with Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> the sit down with Oprah and E.T. I would look I, forward I, to that. I can just see them. I, I, I just, I'm going with Oprah. Sorry. <laughs> I can't ever go wrong with her. Uh, d did you ever envision uh, this like for your life? I mean, I'm sure when you started out uh, with like that legal background that was there always a, 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 a idea to be in entertainment as well? Or did that just kind of, uh, you know, did you stumble your no, way I mean, into this I, empire? I, I, I was a law professor. Right. <laughs> So, no. And, you know, it just kind of over the years, um, stuff happened, you know, and just, you know, I, I was writing a column for the L.A. Times and did a radio show on law and just stuff happened. So just, you know, that's what I tell like my, you know, the young people on my staff, which is that you just can't plan out your life because you don't know. 
and there are twists and turns. And then what you got to do is keep your eyes open so you can look at each twist and turn and say, is this a good opportunity? Something I want, something I don't. But you got to keep your eyes open. You got to so. get a you got to get an inside deal with Chris Jenner and the Kardashians, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, well, hey, right, uh, Harvey. I, listen, I I gotta say, Chris Jenner. You know, I thought you were going to say know. Chris for the, you for could, the ambassador. Yeah, you send her no, no, no. up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I if they're hostile. If they're hostile, you send up Chris. Tell, I, I will tell you something. I, I have known Chris Jenner for many, many years. I kind of worked with her. Um, well, she was somebody that I would talk to during the O.J. Simpson case. And what is that, 20, well, 26 years ago. Yep. And so I've known her for a long time. And she's a great example that back then, there was no way in the world you would guess that she would evolve into what she has today. Mm -hmm. There's just no way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember talking to Kim Kardashian when she was 13 years old, when she picked up the phone and I was calling her dad. And, um, <laughs> and who would have funk, you know? Yeah, right. Well, so, but same thing know, for you as well. I mean, right. It's like, you, you, I don't think you ever envisioned when you're a law professor that you'd be uh, not only doing this entertainment stuff, but then also doing, you know, UFO specials with, you know, trying to debunk theories and all that. So n nobody knows. I, I will say it, it definitely beats the practice of law. I <laughs> I, a little I, more I, I interesting. Promise, yeah. I promise you guys that. <laughs> I, I'm in a similar situation. I took one pre-law class and I'm happy I went the way I did. <laughs> well, I'm not sure how invested you were, but I'll, <laughs> I'll buy that. <laughs> yeah, I sat in one then dropped out of college. It worked out. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we appreciate the time and I very much am looking forward to the special. So it's uh, TMZ investigates UFOs. It'll be on uh, tonight on Fox. Fox. So uh, hopefully eight o'clock, eight o'clock, uh, seven central. I uh, hope it opens up some eyes and uh, hopefully when we get some real answers one day, you can uh, run it back with us and we'll talk again. All right. Absolutely. Hey, guys, it really it's been a pleasure being on your show. Thank, Thank you, you Harvey. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Bye. You almost killed him. Anybody who's not subscribed. We said you're going to fucking put us in the grave if you watch these videos and don't subscribe. It literally almost happened to John. So close. Fucking so you. fucking close. Maybe I can taste it. Subscribe so we don't have to look at that <laughs> fat goiter neck ever again because it's actually going to kill us if you're not subscribed to our channel. And make sure you leave a comment below. What meal would you give to uh, the first aliens to ever make contact uh, here on Earth? What's the most American meal you can think of? Mike. What was that? Mike. <laughs> Mike.